Three years after the killing of an 11 year old Colorado Springs boy, his okay. Okay, everybody, what's up? Good, uh, am I live yet? So we're gonna keep setting it. I don't know why it does that. That's fine. It auto starts the stream. How you guys doing? Good morning, welcome. Hope you guys are doing great. I wanted to start a little bit early today, 15 minutes early because, um, and by the way, the, the lighting thing I'm working on, I think to, by tomorrow, I think I'll have the curtains set up. Um, yes, because I got this uneven lighting going on, so I'll be able to have more control of that. Uh, but good morning. Welcome. Hope you guys are doing good. Rise and shine. I got some coffee brewing. Um, and a couple of things I, I wanted to get. I wanted to get um, the super chats that I missed yesterday. Or maybe I should give them a couple of minutes. Or maybe I should do it on the lunch break. Or so. I mean, not the lunch break, the 20 minute break. Make sure those people come back. We'll see. Um, let me pull up the link as well. Thank you. And there's a couple of things too, that we need to look at during our little 15 minute, 20 minute breaks. Most people probably think we're starting at 11, so I don't want to, I don't want them to miss anything. Okay. Audio. Oh. Muted. There we go. Okay. Make sure we got the setup going. Boom. Oh, bro. <laughs> oh, Lord. They all saying good morning to you. Uh, let me put myself on the screen here, man. Uh, good morning. Good morning, man. If you guys can hit like, welcome. Do you guys think? Do you like it like this kind of more zoomed in or is it better zoomed out? It's kind of a problem if it's too zoomed out. I think it's, this is fine. I think because maybe it's like too much space with the other one. I don't know. I think the other one's too wide. Maybe. Right. I think like this is good enough. Okay, hold on. Lord help me. And then the camera has like a mind of its own too. Kind of it's like shifting a little bit. They still. Alrighty, alrighty. Layla Katrina, good morning. Sadie, Amy, Amy, what's up? Banana. Oh yeah, I gotta send this video. I want these guys. We gotta take a look at the candle video too at some point. Oh, there we go. They're kind of getting set up too. Good morning. Good morning. I slept really good last night. To see my face. <laughs> I learned a long time ago when I first started doing YouTube, I was thinking about that this morning to try to have things on point if possible on camera. Long, long time ago, when I first, first started, I realized that people notice everything in the background, in the corner, like any little thing that's off, <laughs> they notice everything. So you got to try to at least have a nice, you know, clean space or whatever. Even sounds. If you got a baby crying in the background, they're gonna oh the baby. Why's the baby crying? What's going on with the baby? You know, they notice everything, bro. You gotta be on point if you can, you know. Good morning, good morning, Chloe. Lutfi. 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 I know you're in India, but I just gotta say Lutfi. I don't know why. Mewis girl, Septarina, Plain Jane, Kenya, Christy. My try for reels, astastic, chaos, digs, chives. Good morning, man. I was a little annoyed this morning when I first woke up because uh, I woke up earlier um, and I somehow got Maddie late to school today. I woke up earlier than any of the other days. But I, I think I, I got so comfortable that I, because I woke up so early that I was like playing around, like lollygagging, thinking I have all the time in the world. And then I was like, oh shit. So I got to stick to waking up early, but not lollygagging, at least until she's off at school. Can we ask the clerk to move the monitor so we can get a clear view of 
Um, Letitia. <laughs> and we're going to have to adjust this around today. It looks like they have three panels today. Move to stage. And you can control this. Okay. Okay. So I just I'll have to and then we let's I move that away. Do a little prep. Let's see. I think we can get it. And it looks to me it almost looks like they've moved further away. Like I hope we can see the teacher because she's trying to hide. Rise and sh oh, I ordered cachava, M. Tice. Good morning, M. Tice. I ordered cachava. I really, it's so expensive though. Cachava, it's like, I, it's like $90 or some shit, bro. From like, it's like a protein shake of vitamin. This is $90. I'm like, maybe I'll try it one more time because <laughs> it's supposed to be a meal replacement, but I hardly think that it replaces a meal. I take cachava and then I also put protein on top of it, like a regular whey protein on top of it. And then I add some fruits and stuff. I think the child was like commercialized. I don't know. It's anime. What's up? Good morning. Let me go grab my coffee real quick. Rise and shine. Sam Panther, thank you for uh, for gifting the membership. Uh, Elsa, hey Elsa, how you doing? I for, you're in, uh, I forgot where you're at, Scotland? Or, or where you at? Somewhere, right? Somewhere far away. <laughs> Two months. Um, thank you. More months to come. Hope you and Maddie are doing fine. All aboard! I gotta adjust my volume. It's not too loud in your ears. Let me get the super chats from yesterday real quick. Oh, um, on Facebook, thank you, Renee, for the uh, stars. Thank you so much. Good morning to you. Let's get the super chats real quick that I missed yesterday. I think it was just a couple. Um, chemistry queen. Uh, love you, Mel. Bloop, bloop. This is the Twilight Zone. SW4x4. I think I got that yesterday. Jury says, yes, yeah, so I believe the jury options are guilty. Um, not guilty. And then guilty. Guilty by insanity, I think. I think those are the options. The the the, the, the whole thing of this child, like to me, the defense attorney, he's not arguing that she she killed Gannon. He's he yesterday he's like, yeah, we lost. So he, I guess he was trying to say that like in the eyes of social media and, and the in the eyes of the public court or, or public opinion or whatever, like they've lost. He was very dramatic with it though, and he really seemed defeated to me. But at the same time, as a defense attorney, like. Damn, bro, this is like a tough case. Like, what do you do, right? Um, but he's not arguing that she killed Gannon. He's trying to say that she was insane at the time. That's what they're trying to argue. And so instead of if she, if they win that, I guess she would go to a, a hospital, a psych ward, or something. And I really wonder what happens to those people. Is it just for a certain amount of time? Like, what generally? How long are those people in there getting medications and stuff? Do they let them out eventually? How long are they in there? And also, it's, I guess it's got to be nicer than prison or jail, I guess, right? They, I don't know, like probably less security, maybe more comfort. They probably give you a, a ton of meds. Maybe somebody that knows can say, Elsa, thank you so much, Sweden. Sweden, Mel, Sweden. <laughs> Sweden, the, the neutral country. 
what do they say about Sweden? What is Sweden known for? Like the, I don't know what Sweden is known for. Being nice or something? Neutral country? I guess a lot of things. Abundant forest, picture, ski, lakes, breathtaking views and severe winters. I don't know about the winter thing though. Stockholm. Sweden performs well because the country focuses on environmental issues, civic engagement, education, health, and well-being, personal safety, and having a good work-life balance. Don't you guys get off? Don't you guys work like, um, you guys don't work like 40 hours a week, right? You guys work like 10 hours a week or something like that. You guys don't really have to work, right? And you get off like a, like a bunch of vacation and stuff like that. What's the work standards over there? Oh, Switzerland. <laughs> Um. All right, all right, all right. Lisa uh, Lulu from yesterday. Thank you so much for the super chat. Says thank you, Mel, for covering this. I'm deeply invested. Gerilyn Walker. Thank you. Yesterday says thank you for covering this, Mel. Jen Jen. Thanks for covering this. Lacey Petite. Yesterday says thank you for covering this, Mel. Miss Dog Lover says this guy is the reason it will be eight weeks. Blah blah blah. She's talking about the defense attorney. He was. I, I kind of thought that too. I had that same sentiment. Like damn, bro. He's kind of like. On and on and on and on and on. Uh, we still got a couple more minutes. Because um, I want to make a, a point, too. If you if you have Twitter, follow me on Twitter. Because sometimes I'll take snippets of the trial and I'll post it on there if I don't have any notifications on YouTube. But, like, real quick, too. One of the things that this guy was trying to say was uh, when he pulled up this picture from the day before the murder, the defense attorney, he's like, oh, look, they're smiling. They're happy. And it flashed me back to like the Alec Murdoch trial when they're like, oh, look, he's so happy with his family. And I, I guess for some people, that's like a, a point for them. Oh, my God. Yeah, look, they're happy in a picture. How could somebody kill this person? For me, it's like, and <laughs> they're smiling and. But I. I have seen people get caught and stuck on a, on a picture the moments before their death or, 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 or the day before. Oh, my God, they're smiling. That don't mean shit to me. Especially when somebody's crazy. But the defense attorney pulled it up. And, and, and the reason he pulled it up, again, he's not arguing that she killed him. He's trying to say that she was completely fine again in the day before and she had a, a i guess a, a a lapse of sanity and she became insane and because of her childhood trauma which people that have been following this case from day one there's a lot of people i haven't i don't know if they could tell me have you guys ever heard of her with this child abuse um situation that they're they're saying now they're claiming has this come up before or is this the first time this has ever been mentioned i'm curious about that and so, yeah, I flash back and I see this picture. And I'm like, I mean, when they when they brought it up yesterday, it flashed me back to like Alec. And I'm like, oh, I kind of rolled my eyes. I'm like, <laughs> OK. Um, all right. Let's see what else we got. Um, Elizabeth Mayer. Elizabeth, I don't know if you're in the chat now. I really wanted to catch you when you came in the chat because I made a mental note yesterday. I just want to say thank you for the super chat. But also I saw you gifted five gifts of memberships yesterday. So I don't know if you're in the chat now. If you're not, I'll make a point of it to thank you again later. Um, she said yesterday, thanks for covering this case and all you do. So um, I'm sorry I, I dipped out yesterday at the end of the trial because there was that chase. I don't want to lose the opportunity of catching a chase. You know, um, I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't at the end of the trial. If I was at, if it, you know, I would have just kept watching it while streaming the trial. Uh, Lace with Glitter yesterday, too. Thank you so much for resubscribing on Twitch. Appreciate that three months in a row. Amazing. I think it's weird on Twitch that I, and correct me if I'm wrong. You have to like manually resubscribe every month. Why is it? Isn't it auto? I heard that you manually have to do that. That's just so weird to me. Um, Lay says, oh, this trial is going to be heartbreaking. I don't know what to expect. I know it's going to details. It's gruesome. The opening statements yesterday was just like a little preview, but like even the defense attorney said like he was kind of saying like 
there's going to be a lot more to come. There's going to be a lot more graphic stuff. Like, this is just... It's going to be weird navigating this, you know? I, I don't know. Um, and it's a, it's a weird one, too, I guess, because they're not arguing that she killed him. So it's like this whole insane or not insane thing. Sam Panther, thank you so much for the super chat. This was yesterday. Kim Berger, thank you for the super chat yesterday. And now I think we're caught up. We're caught up. Elsa, thank you so much for the super chat. Gracias. Love you. Dr. Edward Moskowitz. Buenos dias. Uh, thank you, Mel. Amazing. Love the people in your chat. Hugs to Maddie. You're the only reason I'm by. So Edward Moskowitz was nice enough to. They sent me the. The Kachava, man. And uh, I thought that was really nice because it, it is a little pricey. I ordered it again. If you heard me, I'm still kind of like on the fence. But I don't take it at day. I take it at night. I like the flavor. It has a nice flavor, but it doesn't fill me. So I just, I do the kachava, but then I also mix protein in there as well. And, uh, and I put some kale, sometimes a little bit of fruit. And that's when it actually fills me up. I'm still trying to outweigh the cons and pros. Because it's like, if I'm going to take a kachava, but then I still have to take a protein shake on top of it. You know, I don't know. So we'll see. It does taste delicious, though. Uh, NYCX, and I haven't taken it consistently, so I'm going to try it consistently, at least for, especially now that I'm getting a package, at least for two weeks, I'm going to try it consistently. Slow the chat. Okay, let me slow the chat for you guys. Slow the chat. Okay, all right. All right, all right. They're telling me slow it down. Slow it down. Oh, well, we got 1,600 already? People in here? Wow. Holy crap. So uh, Jose in the chat says, wait, the biological mother is in court. So yeah, um, she is. Uh, I actually have a video I can show you guys if you want to, uh, while we wait. This will, she actually, apparently she had a walk out yesterday. I think Amy sent this to me. That, because they're about to start. She was there. I didn't even know she was there yesterday. But apparently she had to walk out. Um, and, and something that I think we should do. Uh, so people have been asking about the biological mother and where she was at. Now, I know some people get offended when people ask that, but I think it's a natural question. And I, I spoke to Diggs about this and there's like, they had, there's reasoning. I, I think that we should, I might call somebody one day on stream. And so just so people can hear whatever. And again, that's not an excuse to kill Gannon, but I just think that somebody that knows the story well. I think they had some sort of agreement. Um, we're getting to go back and forth or something like that. She has gotten like a lot of criticism. I that's what I've heard over the years. Um, so at some the point, he's not present in the courtroom. We can do that. Oh, um, thank you. Um, is there anything we need to take up outside the presence of the jury at this point in time? Prosecution, defense. Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the jury in. <coughs> At some point, we can talk about it just to kind of clear the air and maybe move on or whatever, you know, instead of just leaving it linger. I don't think it's like a main focus or anything like that, but we can at some point, like, you know, I guess, uh, you know, give me one second. Let's see if I can fix this. You know, I mean, the, the dad had rights too, to Gannon and uh, this woman was sneaky. Um, Leticia and conniving. She killed Gannon while he was out on deployment. You know, so it's not like. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if anything, it's just like a, a, a reminder. I feel like the cameras too. Just I am Todd. Is that what you did? I can hear him back there. So, <clears throat> oh, 
All rise for the jury, please. Have to fix this another time. A reminder about who who you have your kids with, you know. But even then, I have an interesting story to share with you guys. At some point, we get another break. Somebody sent this story to me about. You guys heard in the chat about this grandmother that was watching, I guess, um, her daughter's kid, and twice a year apart, the Thank kid you, man. died. I'll be seated. In the grandmother's care. Court will recall uh, twenty CR one three five eight People versus Letitia Stalk. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Um, we're going to start the day, uh, as we will every day from here on out, uh, with a question. Has anything occurred since we were last together that causes any of you to believe that you could not continue to serve as a fair and impartial juror in this case? If so, please raise your hand. No response? All right, yesterday uh, we finished the day with the opening statements of both the prosecution and the defense. At this point in time, the prosecution uh, will be calling their witnesses. Mr. Allen, call your first witness, please. <laughs> Mr. Stauk, if you would step forward and raise your right hand, please, sir. <clears throat> wow. That? Mr. Stauk, if you'd raise your right hand, please, sir. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give this medal to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Sir. Go ahead and have a seat in the witness stand. Please watch your step as you step into the stand. Mr. Allen? Thank you, Ron. Now, will you please introduce yourself to this jury and spell your name for the record? Um, Al Stauk, and that's S T A U C H. I'm shocked. And Gannon's father. <laughs> now, I want to uh, start by talking a little bit about you. You may. I guess we're not going to be able to see him. What is people to number one? That's my boy. Yes. Yes. Defense. Exhibit number one will be admitted. Go ahead. I would object to it. I can't see it. Okay. We need to take it down though if it's all right. I want to have you tell the jury a little bit about your son. How old was he when you lost him? He's 11. <clears throat> How was he born? September 29th, 2008. No, he was uh, four months early. One pound and six ounces. Who is Gannon's mother? Landon uh, Hyatt, uh, I think her name's Bullard now, Landon Bullard. Were you married with Landon when Gannon was born? I was, yes. Gannon have a little sister? Yes. Lena. Straight for the jury, how big Gannon was? Or Scott the whole yeah, so as I said, he was born on September 29th, and it was about a month after that. I think it was October 20th. I got to hold him for the first time, and that's how big he was right there. And with the last time I ever got to hold him, he wow. was in a box about that big as well. Six months after he died. Was he in the hospital for a short amount of time after? Yeah, I believe we brought him home in January. If I remember correctly, the, towards the end of January or sometime in January of um, 2009. So about three, three and a half months in the hospital. Did he have any uh, issues that he had to overcome? Did you get <laughs> uh, yeah, early on he had um, 
a lot of lung issues. Actually, while he was in the hospital, he had quite a number of surgeries, um, hernia. He had some, like I said, I think his lung collapsed one time, so he had a chest tube, also was on a feeding tube, and a lot of things that go along with being a preemie. Um, after that, he, he did take a while to overcome his lung issues. He had pneumonia and RSV, I think at the same time, at one point. Um, couple, I mean, the, the only long lasting, well, two long lasting things he had from it, he just had some stomach issues where he had trouble going to the bathroom and then um, he did have ADHD. Was he, uh, did he sort of lag in size to kids similarly aged? Uh, not really, I mean, other than at his birth, obviously he was very, very small, one pound, six ounces. Um, but once he caught up, I think we held him back a grade or a, a year just to allow that and him to catch up a little bit in size. But no, you couldn't tell any difference with his, the fifth graders the, the year he died, so. Where was he born? Uh, South Carolina, Florence, South Carolina. When did you all move to? Oh, wow. She's uh, I, moved, I moved to Colorado in uh, February of 2019. Um, my Tisha and the kids had come a month earlier. I, I was stationed in Alaska prior to that, so. What did Galen like to do for fun? Oh, some of his favorite times, and all of his friends can attest to this, is just playing video games. Um, I think he, he wanted to be a YouTube uh, gamer. I think he actually was able to make one video and put it on YouTube, so it's out there. But playing Sonic, and uh, actually Mario was his favorite. So um, that was some of the favorite things I ever got to do with him. So. Up on your witness stand, mm -hmm. um, you should also have a binder there. Yes, sir. It's going to get a little crowded up there. Small camera there. Stand in front of me. It's going to be there, too. Open it up. It should be the first exhibit. Yes. What is people's exhibit? Excuse me, that's a picture of Lena. Uh, yes, sir, that would have been probably 2018 at our house in Myrtle Beach. Defense. Uh, exhibit number two will be admitted. Uh, all right. Oops. There you go. <coughs> Where was that photo taken? Uh, like I said, we owned a house in Myrtle Beach at that time, and I believe that would have been the fall of 2018. So how old was Lena? Um, 2012, so six and a half. Yeah. Actually, right, thanks. Yeah, about six and a half years old. Was, was she also born early? She was. Uh, she actually tried to come out a little earlier than Gannon. They were you know, always a competitive with one another, but uh, Gannon was born at 24 weeks. She tried to come out at 22. Um, but I think it was actually 34 weeks of, you know, being with her mom and her tummy there before she came out. So she was about two months early. What was the relationship like between you? Oh, I obviously as much love as a sister and brother could have. I, I think one of the, <coughs> I think a famous quote Lena said after Gannon died was, I'm just going to miss getting on his nerves. So if that sums it up for you right there, but yeah, he loved his sister and, uh, well, one thing I always urged him to do, and I know his mama did too, was to look after his little sister. And even getting off the bus and walking home, I used to fuss at him if he uh, let her walk home alone. And it was three houses away. So that was kind of the theme for us. Just be with your sister and be together, you know. Were you in How long were um, you Just shy of 10 years. Um, but dating and all, I think we were together 11, 11 or so, 12 years. You know the defendant in this case? Yes, sir. Uh, I was married to her for four or five years, whatever it was. When did you meet her? I met her, uh, I think somewhere along the way, playing softball on the, one of the various teams we uh, played on. Uh, but I didn't really get to know her until um, the beginning of 2014, so January time frame. January of 2014 is when I started to, when I like met her and went out with her and started to get to know her. This is um, not intended to embarrass anybody, but were you still married to Wayne? 
Yes, sir. We were separated and, uh, you know, with the intent of getting divorced, going our separate ways. And, and that's when I met and started dating Tisha. Did the defendant have her own? She did. Okay. Harley. You move in that binder to people's exhibit number three. Is that a picture of her? Sure is. Is that a picture of her? Yes, sir. When was that photo taken? Um... Looks like, at, I mean, I think that would have been 2019. It looks like her high school graduation picture, if I'm not mistaken. This time I move for admission of people's okay. Exhibit three will be admitted. <laughs> yes, sir. Where was that from? It, I believe it was in Columbia, South Carolina, where uh, the graduation was, somewhere in South Carolina. Because she would, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say she was, she finished her high school at an online school that was based in South Carolina. So she went back for the graduation. When you began your relationship with South Carolina? It was, yes, sir. Murder Beach. When did you and the defendant get? Uh, January 2015. Yes, sir. You identify her and point to where she's sitting and describe what she's wearing. T-shirt right there with the kind of green jacket on, bluish green jacket, black. The record will so reflect. Go ahead. What do you do for work now? Uh, I'm an officer in the Colorado National Guard in a full-time status. <laughs> Typically, typically, yeah, one week in a month, and then a summer duty. You said that you're full. I am. Uh, so I am in a. It's called AGR, and that's what I've been my whole career. Uh, even in starting in South Carolina, I was. Uh, it's active guard is what it is. Um, was there for a rough twelve years or so, um, as a recruiter and in, in, in other capacities. And then I took my commission as an officer and moved states. Um, I didn't necessarily get transferred, but I moved states to Alaska uh, as an officer and then spent two, about two years there and then been in Colorado since 2019 as an officer in the Colorado Guard. So uh, my, my main duties are as, right now as a missile defense officer. The teacher's off to the well, side here. Let's talk here. a little bit about the family history. She's hiding. So yesterday you could see she her a little bit. In January 2015. Sir. Was that in South Carolina? Uh, yes, sir. She don't want to be on camera. Uh, I went to, I got hired and went there. I reported in June. Um, I had to come through here for some schooling. We call it TDY and route, but uh, I got hired, went to school here, and then drove up to Alaska to be permanently stationed. June. Uh, 2017. Uh, somewhat. It was... When I when I initially drove there, I had my two children with me, um, Lena and Gannon, and we made that trip and uh, one of the most memorable trips of my life. Um, and then Tisha and Harley came along the way a little bit later, but they they never really permanently moved there. They came for a couple weeks at a time and and, and then came and left and did whatever else. Just a little bit. And what was the Uh, initially, well, I'll, I'll talk about during our separation, they, they both stayed, the kids stayed in the house and me and Landon alternated time in the house so the kids could be as stable as possible during that um, tough time. Initially, the custody status, Landon had the majority time, um, but we were both in the same local area. So, you know, we did the best we could at um, sharing that time. But I think she moved in initially with her mom and the kids stayed there with her. And that was the initial agreement. And when you said she, just so the record is clear, you're talking about Landon. Landon, I'm sorry. Yes, Landon specifically had the custody arrangement. At some point. Uh, Legendary, good morning. Uh, yes, that would have been in March of 2018 while I was in Alaska. You mentioned just a moment ago. I'm too, so I think. Yes, sir. 
So did you have custody of them before you actually got transferred to Alaska? No, because that was 2017 when I took that trip initially. Um, and then they were still with their mom, um, Landon, with the majority time, uh, custody time. They What they did was they spent the summer with me in Alaska, and then I flew them back home or back to their mother for the start of the next school year. What did you move to Colorado? Uh, I moved... To me individually, I can't, I think I got boots on ground February 15th of 2019, I believe is the date I got here. And like I said, Tisha and the kids were here beginning of January, getting a house set and everything. The defendant, yeah. You may. I wish we could see uh, Dad talking. I thought we were supposed to have a camera up the. Been marked as people's exhibit number four. Do you recognize this? Yes, stand. that looks like a map of uh, Lorison Ranch neighborhood. Does it have a uh, specific address notated on that map? It does. What's that address? Uh, that would have been our house at six six two seven Mandon Drive. Is that a Colorado Springs address? It is. Is that in El Paso County, Colorado? It is. You want to move for admission of people's exhibit number four? Mr. Okay. Tolini. Number exhibit number four will be admitted. Go ahead. I'm going to get you guys a picture of uh, Can you dad. point out the label where the 6627 Mandan Drive address is? Right here. Is that where you lived when you moved to Colorado from Alaska? Yeah, I, um, I think it, just to be clear, initially, I think they had a, a little temporary housing on base, as you do when you PCS. Um, and then Tisha, or the defendant, found um, that house for rent, and we moved in. Um, and I think they were already in the house when I got here. When did when did you all move into that house? I don't remember the sp specific date. I know they were already in the house by the time I got here in the middle of February. Okay. So February 2019, when you came from Alaska to here, you went to that. House. I went directly to the house from the airport. Okay. <clears throat> this already but is that address in Colorado? yes sir how long did you all live in that house? bro thank you um i lived there i guess right out of year because when everything happened with gannon in january of 2020 uh you know the investigation started taking place and we pretty much decided just to move out and the landlord allowed us to break the lease at that point and then uh, so it would have been early february of 2020 when we moved out officially. So let's just go through just a general description of that house. Was it a two story, a rancher, a rancher with a basement? I, I'm not too savvy on specific style of houses, but it had a main floor and a basement. Was the basement finished? It was. Was there also an unfinished area? Um, I mean, in the closet what was unfinished, but all the areas we frequented in the house were finished. What about where the furniture room was? Yeah, when I said closet, that's uh, that's what I was referring to, the furniture room, yes. <laughs> I call it, yeah, because we kept the luggage and boxes and stuff in there. And there was another unfinished closet under the stairs as well. I'm sure we'll see that as well. Where was the bedroom that you ended up? Uh, in, on, the fir on the main floor. And then was there a, a level above that? Negative. Okay, so it's just the main floor and then a basement? Then a basement, yes, sir. Who else had a bedroom? Uh, initially, it was Gannon um, when we first moved in, but at one point we switched Lena and Gannon to what we'll see as Gannon's bedroom and Lena moved upstairs. And how many bedrooms, other bedrooms were upstairs? Uh, just that one bedroom when you walk in the front door. So two bedrooms. Two bedrooms two total. Yep. And then two bedrooms. Yes, sir. Is there a living room on that main level? Yes, sir. Kitchen. Kitchen. Yes, sir. Access to the garage on that main level? Yeah, and the access included the laundry stuff, the laundry room. Okay. So. And then what about downstairs? Uh, downstairs was, as soon as you come down the stairs to the left was the, uh, I called the closet, but the, um, the boiler room or whatever. And then Gannon's room right next to that. To the right was the, the, 
uh, I don't know, living room area in the basement. And then behind that was a bathroom and what was Harley's room, Harley's bedroom. Letitia's on screen now. Look at the right there. Oh, maybe it was sent full screen? Oh. Keep 5 through 12 and just give me a heads up. It's right there. I don't know if they panned it or what, but you can see her now before you can see her. But uh, there's not any special view that anybody else is going to have. Everybody just has the same okay. view. This is the only feed everybody has. Just different uh, viewpoints of the house. You want me to go through specifically? Yes, I want the okay. pictures of the 6627 Mandan Drive residence. Yes, starting with the outside and working through the house. So, People's Exhibit 5, is that the front of the house? Yeah, that would be a front view where you can see the garage and the front door, yes. People's Exhibit 6, what is that? That's as soon as you come in the front door, uh, there's a the coat closet to the left and then a view of the living room. Covering her face, too. You see that? She like. Uh, that's a, you're walking into the house further. You can see the couch in the living room and the kitchen to the right. As well as the back sliding patio door, you can see what's well, behind the curtains, but that's what that is. <laughs> Same thing, it's a closer up view of the kitchen. Um, you can kind of see the dishwasher and everything, but yeah, that's the kitchen area. Nine is basically looks like it's standing at the back sliding glass door where you can see the living room, the stairs down, and then the, the garage entryway there. Upstairs living room. That is a view of the master bedroom as soon as you walk in. That is a view of the laundry area. Um, and then the next door would be access to the garage. 12 is the garage. Thank you, Elsa. Damn, bro. I should look creepy as hell, bro. Let me show you this picture. Yes, sir. Exhibits 5 through 12 will be admitted. Go ahead. Uh, you may give me just a second, though. All right, go ahead. So, it's the front. Uh, <coughs> here the garage door. It is. Moving on to people's six. So, point out, and there's actually an extended bunter on behind there. No. The other side. Yeah, it's right here. Other side. Other side? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. If you don't want to, you can just turn around and look at this. Just make sure when you're pointing away from us that the furthest you're from you can hear you look at. Okay. So what are we looking at here? So, um, like I said, this is uh, walking into the front door. This is uh, what I use as my closet, actually, but the front, what would be a coat closet. Um, you can see the couch in the living room right there. Um, as we walk forward, we'll see to the right is the kitchen, and this is a, a wall that... Um, covers the stairwell going down. But that's the living room area right in here on the main floor. So the front door, would that be basically to our back in this photo? Yes, as you walk in the front door, front door is right behind us, yes, sir. Okay, people exhibit number seven. Tell the jury what they're looking at there. Uh, this is where I referenced the couch in the living room, kitchen area, and the back sliding patio doors uh, behind the curtains there. There's a dog in the photo there as well? Yeah, that's Chance. And then it looks like there might be a person on the couch. Yep, and that would be Harley right there. Okay, people's exhibit number eight. <coughs> uh, same thing, here's the kitchen. Uh, I said just a second ago, dishwasher and the back sliding doors once again. People's exhibit number nine. Uh, yeah, so right behind us right now would be the those back patio sliding doors. And here's the stairwell going down. This is the wall I referenced in the first picture. Uh, you know, TV living room area. And this is the entryway into the laundry room. And this would be the master bedroom behind this wall. So sort of around the corner there? Yeah, you have to go around the corner and into the master bedroom. Okay. And people's exhibit number 10. What are we looking at there? Uh, so yeah, going around that corner, we've come into the master bedroom now. Master bedroom door is behind us. And this little bit of window into the backyard and um, master bed right here. And then sort of over to the left, what's to the left in that photo? So if you go sort of, if we don't have a picture of it yet, right. but where okay. would that go? So I'm look, if I'm standing looking at this back door and I turn my body to the left, there'll be the bathroom, the master bathroom. And then through that master bathroom would have been Tisha's, or excuse me, the defendant's closet. Okay. And then people's exhibit number 11. 
Uh, once again, looking from that living room view, this is the garage entryway we discussed and uh, the laundry facilities right here. And then you, into Deb. that, uh, through that door would be into the garage. Okay. People's 12. And that is the garage. Whose car is parked there in that garage? That was the car that belonged to Harley. What kind of car is that? It's a Volkswagen Jetta. I think it was a 2018 Volkswagen Jetta. Looks like maybe somebody's a woodworker. Somebody. Who's that? Uh, I try. I don't know if I could claim to be an actual woodworker, but I give it a, my best shot. So, so that woodworking material there, uh, various pieces of wood and table and all that kind of thing, that's your stuff. Yeah, pretty much this whole side of the garage was dedicated with parking bikes. But other than that, it was, uh, you know, just to my supplies and my woodworking stuff. What kind of stuff would you build with wood? Well, this you see right here, I actually just, well, I'm about 90% done as a table for mom. And I surprised her with it the other day. Um, one of my favorite things to make is like cutting boards and uh, like epoxy boards and stuff like that. But that's kind of what I do. So you <coughs> mentioned making a table for, I think you said mom. Do you mean your mom? Yeah, my mom sitting right over there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you would make some furniture? Yeah, some furniture. And then also cutting boards? Cutting boards and stuff like that, yeah. I want to take, have you take a look in that binder again. Okay. Should be the next exhibit, number 34. Do you see it there? Uh, I have 13 is next. So flip all the way to Flip 34. to 34, okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is that a photo of a table that you built? Yes, sir. Who'd you build that table for? I built that for Gannon, so he'd have a place to put his, uh, you know, Legos and his, you know, his little toys and stuff in his room. Is it a fair and accurate representation of uh, that table that you built? Yes, sir. You want to move for admission and permission to publish People's 34? Mr. Tolini? No objection. Exhibit 34 will be admitted. Go ahead. So People's 34 is now displayed on the two screens here. Um, it, it's fairly obvious, but just point out the table that we're talking about that you built for Gannon. Right here, it's red and blue one, and the colors were specifically for Mario. Like I said, it's one of his favorite things, so I wanted him to enjoy that based on his Mario little thing. Um, and then there's a some scrap wood uh, in that photo just to the left there. Can you point that out? Yeah, so a uh, little piece of like OSB board and then my uh, circular saw here. There's more of that same OSB up there. I use that to build those uh, in the laundry room. You saw that little shoe container is gray. Built it out of that wood. So, so you you're used a term that I'm not familiar with. I'm not a woodworker. OSB, what does that mean? OSB, it's, it's like plywood, different types of plywood. It's, okay. it's a generic term. Okay. Board, so. <clears throat> Article board is another word that's used. Commonly. Okay. And if you could pull that down the picture. Oh, is that and then the I want to have you now flip back to people's um, 13 through 31. Okay. And then just flip through all of those and tell me when you're done. 13 through? 31. Thank you. Is that the particle board that uh, they <coughs> found with blood on there? Good morning, guys. Thank you for, uh, for watching the stream trial with us appreciate that with me uh this is gannon's father testifying i was a little Stop surprised at 31 you said yes to see him be the first person to testify uh, are those basically just uh more photos of the 6627 mandan drive address majority of them yes sir um are they all fair and accurate representations of uh that house yes sir i move for admission of 13 through 31 and permission to publish mr tolini couple and i'm referring to at a 1920 i'm sorry and yeah 21 i i think there's going to be there needs to be more foundation laid for those photos but for the rest of them i don't have a good catch so those are coming later so okay. it's 13 through 18 and then 21 through 31 my apologies okay. okay let's go there 13 through 18 and 21 through 31 do you have objection i do not all right, those photos will be admitted. Go ahead. And permission to publish those photos, Your Honor. You may go ahead. <clears throat> I 
All right, so we've got 13 displayed on the screen there. Describe what we're looking at there. So if you can see over here, this carpet, this is where we came in the front door and I said there was the wall leading down the stairs and this is the stairway to the basement. People's number 14. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention the stairs kind of do a wraparound. So we came down the stairs and now we're looking down into the basement and we had a little computer area here. Um, but yeah, that's the basement entryway. And 15. So coming down the stairs to the right, this is what you would have seen the little, uh, I call it the downstairs living room. So TV, sofa, mm -hmm. that kind of my thing. bike and then the dogs kennel was over here. And then, it's, you know, mementos, you can see college degrees and pictures of the family and stuff. Was it typical that you all would spend time as a family in this room? Yeah, I mean, I, I watched a lot of movies with the kids down there, but um, we did upstairs as well. So would the kids spend time on their own down there? Oh, yeah, a lot. Because, again, uh, the, you can see his uh, Nintendo Switch right here. As, that was his pride and joy. And uh, we also had a PlayStation and they would watch movies. And so all the gaming and stuff typically took place downstairs just to the right of that photo uh was there a hallway that went back to that back bedroom yeah it's hard can, to see you can kind of see a little uh crease right here that's the corner and it goes into uh harley's room and then her bathroom area and there's another closet right there but. Okay. and then people's exhibit 16. yeah so this would have been the couch we just saw um in the other picture and then this is just the back corner um, I guess it would have been what the northwest corner of the basement. I don't know, but um, but yeah. And then you sort of uh, started to point at it there, but there's a blackish square there in the center of that carpet. Yes, sir. Uh, just backing up a little bit. Um, in January of 2020, um, specifically January 25th and 26th, uh, which would have been a Saturday and Sunday, were you at home on the on that weekend? No, I actually. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain my duty schedule, but every other week I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that week I actually have to work day shift on a Friday and Saturday, and then I left town on Sunday. So I was at work all day Saturday, came home, uh, the defendant and my mom was in town, and the defendant and the, I and my mom and the kids ate dinner, and then uh, my mom was leaving that night, so I took her to the airport in Denver um, for her flight, and then I stayed in the airport. I slept across from the ticket counter on the floor there, and then uh, I because I had an early morning flight to go to Oklahoma for training for two weeks. So, so when did you actually um, drive up to Denver? And I'm assuming you mean uh, DIA Denver Airport. Yeah, DIA. Uh, so, I mean, I get off. I don't think I got off early that evening. I, I usually get off at 1800 or at 6 p.m. And uh, it was 15 minute drive home or so. Um, we ate dinner and then I, no later than eight o'clock, I would assume. I, I don't remember exactly what time mom's flight left DIA, but. So you drive mom up to the airport and then you just stayed at the airport because you had a flight the next day? I had an early morning flight to uh, uh, through Dallas, I think to Lawton, Oklahoma. Uh, but yeah, I did. I just slept on my duffel bag or whatever right there. There's a little seating area right across from the American Airlines ticket counter at DIA. And I just laid down on the floor right there. So when you left on Saturday evening, whatever time it was, who was left at the Mandan Drive residence? Uh, the defendant and then uh, Harley and Lena and Gannon. Any other adults there? Not that I know of. No, how, old was, how old was Harley at that time? She would have been, let's see, 5102. That was, so she was uh, 17. How old was, 18. how old was Gannon? 11. And Lena? Uh, Lena was, uh, what, her birthday's in January. So, sorry, I'm doing math here. So eight, she had just turned eight. Okay. You're doing math better than I could if right. I was sitting on the stand, so thank you. So, um, when you left the house on that Saturday evening to drive mom and yourself up to the DIA, was that carpet like that when you left? It was not, no, sir. Um, did you talk to the defendant about that? I, th I believe she... I, I, well, first, did, did you talk to her about it? I did talk to her. She said there was a, an accident and a candle spill. Okay. I, I don't know if it was, uh, let me clarify. I don't remember if it was over a text or over a phone call, but there was a conversation about it at some okay. point. We're going to go over that. Candle Do you remember when too. you learned about a uh, candle spill and a burn or whatever? I, 
confident that it was that Sunday night, which would have been the 26th. Okay. Either that or the next morning in okay. the text messages. And is that what we're looking at there is sort of uh, a cutout area of that carpet as a result of whatever burn happened? Yeah, what, what I was told was, yeah, there was a spill here, but you can also see that she claimed there was, a, the defendant claimed there's supposedly some candles spilled on the couch as well. You can see those little spots there. That's what she claimed that was. Oh, Did she ever say who cut that square out like that? I th when I got home, I think there was something over it. So I don't, I don't know if she ever, the defendant ever told me that she had cut anything out. I, I cannot remember specifically on that. Okay. Let's move on to People's Exhibit 17. What are we looking at here? So basically, you're kind of standing by the TV almost now. And then you're looking back to where we came down the stairs. And this would have been that entryway into Harley's area. Once again, the dog kennel, we referenced that in the computer area. And this is what I call it a closet. I, I forget how you referenced it, but the boiler room or whatever. I call it a storage room. But storage room, okay. Uh, unfinished area where okay. furnace and that kind of thing? Yes, sir. Okay. And then where's Gannon's room in relation to that? So you have this behind this wall. You just, there's a little small little uh, hallway. As soon as you get here, you take a right and it leads into his bedroom. Okay. People's Exhibit 18. Is that just a, sh a closer up view of into that storage room? Yeah. Now we're walking towards the storage room here. And then you can see this little, you know, gap here. That's how you get into Gannon's room. People's 21. So, Judge, we'll have to turn the screen off for just a moment. Okay, we're ready. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so, 21 is on the screen behind you now. Okay. What are we looking at there? So we've, ta we've taken probably two or three steps into Gannon's room now because we're kind of in the center. This was his bed. <coughs> and um, as I mentioned before, you can see the remnants of when Lena lived here. Those are definitely not Gannon stickers, but um, his bed here, um, there's that table that I built for him for his toys. And then there would also be another bed over on this side of the room um, as we're looking at it to the right. Um, this was a, a storm well or whatever. I remember we're in the basement and I believe there was a ladder in this one going up to the backyard. His closet would have been over here and then I think he had a little TV as soon as you walk in the room to the left. Okay. Is that essentially what Gannon's room looked like when you got back from Oklahoma? I don't remember if I walked down there immediately or not. Um, I, don't, I think I did, but I, I don't remember specifically, but that's about what it would have looked like. Okay. That was a common appearance of his room. So Was his bed always sort of uh, backed up into that corner? Yeah, his bed would have been typically pushed all the way up um, against this wall and this wall, not pulled away for any reason. Does it appear there's a little gap there in the... It's hard, it's hard to tell in this picture because the, the covers are kind of ruffled up, but... Okay. People's Exhibit 23. Do we need to pull it down? Can you just not do it? All right. Yeah, it'd be 22 first, but you can't just. So People's 22, what is that a picture of? So now we're back in the master on the first floor, on the main floor, and uh, we've walked into the master bathroom. You can see the shower right here with the tile and the glass door and this would have been the defendant's closet uh, master closet if you will so the, all the clothes in there and whatever other things were in there pretty much belonged to the defendant <laughs> yeah so as i referenced earlier the the coat closet which is normally called as when you walk in that's where i kept my clothes in her because the defendant had a closet full of clothes and there wasn't room for mine so okay and then people's 23 yeah, this would have been just taking another step in where you can see, you know, just her clothes, the defendant's clothes hanging up, shoes on the top rack there. He was 24. Uh, what are we looking at? That looks like uh, that would have been the defendant's closet, I believe, because those were her book bags. 
<clears throat> and yeah, you can see some of the same clothes we saw in the previous picture hanging up here. So yeah, that's the defendant's closet as well. And her shoes there? Yeah, yeah. her shoes. Another rack of shoes. And then people's 25? Uh, that would have been, as soon as you walk in the closet to the right, the same closet. So I want to ask you some questions before we jump on to the next uh, couple of photos. When did you learn um, about Gannon, Gannon having something happen to him? Uh, you mentioned hearing something from the defendant about the burn downstairs. Was there a point in time when you learned that he was missing? Yes, I was in Oklahoma. We had had our first day of class. Like I said, I was scheduled to be there two weeks. I just got out our first day of class. I went and ran um, a couple of miles, whatever it was. And then uh, I was already back in my hotel room uh, preparing for the next day and, uh, and whatever. And then we started the conversation back and forth about he's not home yet. We had specific times for them to be home. Um, typically was the street lights. It's something I used to do as a kid. I had to be home by the street lights. So we just implemented that and he hadn't come home in time and uh it was abnormal but it wasn't worrisome so um i don't know how much you want me going to that yeah so i'm going to ask you some follow-up questions okay. about that when you say that he hadn't come home yet did you know that he hadn't come home or is this what the defendant was telling you yeah based on the conversation that me and the defendant were having of course i was in oklahoma so i had no clue i'm just relying on trusting her that um, he hadn't come back from his friend's house yet, which is where she said he had been. And what day was that that you heard this information? This would have been the Monday, so that I believe it was the 27th. 27th. Yeah. Do you know if he went to school on the 27th? According to her, he did not. Her being? Excuse me, the defendant. According to the defendant, he did not because he was having stomach issues and he was sick, which in my mind at that time is like, why is he going to his friend's house if he's that sick? So it was a little confusing, but... Would it, uh, would it be typical if he was having uh, digestive issues to stay home from school? No, sir. Okay. So that by itself was out of the ordinary. Right. And when did you find out that he was going to stay home from school? I believe uh, without having timestamps, I believe it was that morning. And I think she sent me some photos okay. saying, you know, Gannon's home. Here he is or whatever. Yep. And then when you found out from the defendant that he had potentially gone to a friend's house and hadn't come home, do you know what time that was? I mean, I don't know specifically without looking when that conversation started, but it was, it was, it was already in the evening where I was when, when um, we started that conversation. So you learn in the morning that Gannon doesn't go to school from the defendant mm -hmm. because of stomach issues. And then sometime in the evening, you learned that he had gone to a friend's house and had not come had home. Had not come home. And that all comes from the defendant? Yes, sir. When did you get back to Colorado? I, um, I came as soon as I can after the, I decided basically that there was something actually wrong. So the 27th, as soon as I decided he's missing, I got to come home. I had, all, I, not to get ahead, but I know, I think the defendant had called 911. I don't know about the, when the police came to the house, but I know I also called them and said, hey, what's going on? My son's out there somewhere. And at that point, I called our travel people and said, hey, I need an emergency ticket home. And I left. I had a buddy drive me to actually to Oklahoma City, and I left from Oklahoma City Airport early the next morning. So let's unpack that just a little bit. Sure. So <clears throat> to your memory, the defendant tells you that she called 911? She did. Was it that specifically, or was it an accumulation of things that made you worried and decide to that you need to get back home and see what's going on? Yeah, so and like I said, I didn't know how deep you wanted me to go at that point. I, I had also contacted numerous of Gannon's friends' parents in the neighborhood that I knew, um, you know, he would typically frequent their house and, and play with their kids and stuff, and none of them had even seen him. So then it, it started to become an issue. Uh, there was also a, another claim about some new friend on the school bus and, and some other stuff surrounding that. I'm sure we'll get into. Um, do you want me to go into nope, that? Okay. All right. Um, there, there was that. And so I asked, started asking the parents about, do you know any, do you know this person's name or do you know anything about another person? And so it became, it started compounding, as you said, to become more worrisome. So basically you're accumulating information and, and growing more worried. Is that what you're describing? Yes, sir. And then when you said you called your travel people, do you mean you called the National Guard folks 
Well, we have like a central billing travel type agency that does all of our flights and stuff like that. So I just called them. I think it's called Sato. I don't remember exactly, but I called them um, on my orders. It has the emergency number. So I just called that, say, hey, I got to go home. This is happening. Okay. Um, I also called Landon and some of her family as well to try to notify them, hey, I'm going home. Something's wrong. When did you actually then fly out of, I think you said Oklahoma City? Uh, yeah. So one of my uh, battle buddies or whatever, one of my guys in my class took me up to Oklahoma City because that was the only flight they could find um, or the soonest flight they could find. And um, early the next morning, I spent the night sitting in the, at, once again, right across from the ticket counter at Oklahoma City. I don't remember the flight time. So when you say the next morning, is that January 28th? Tuesday, January 28th. Yes, sir. Did you get any sleep that night? No, I just sat there and whatever. Did you fly back to DIA or did you fly to Colorado Springs? I think I, I don't remember exactly. I knew I left Oklahoma City, but I'm pretty sure I got back to, well, I know I got back to Colorado Springs, all the, the different legs. I don't remember, to okay. be honest, but I know I got, I came into Colorado Springs. So you, do you remember being picked up from Colorado Springs Airport? Yes, sir. Who picked you up? The defendant. So let's talk about that just a little bit. <clears throat> she have her own vehicle? At that time, I don't know what she drove to the airport based on my Listen to the question. Does she have her own vehicle? We went and got a rental. Well, she went upstairs and got a rental car. Did she have her own vehicle that you all owned that she would typically drive? Bad questions on my part. Does she have a vehicle that she would typically drive? Oh, does she have one at that time? Yes, she did. It was a Volkswagen T1. Okay. What color was it? Black. Okay. What did she actually pick you up in at the airport? Uh, like I said already, she, we, she went upstairs. I was down at the luggage carrier. She went upstairs to get a rental vehicle. Okay. Did that seem odd to you? Absolutely. Okay. At some point, uh, were you in contact with Landon uh, with this news of Gannon being missing? Absolutely. And once I decided there was an issue, an illegitimate issue, uh, I, I think I called her first, can't get a hold of her. And then I started calling her daddy and other family members to try to get a hold of her. But I did talk to her Monday on the 27th that evening while still in uh, um, at Fort Sill. And then I'm sure I don't remember exactly along the way, but she said, I'm, I'll be there. And she started getting her travel arrangements set to get there. So did she actually then come out to Colorado? She did. Where did she stay when she came to Colorado? Initially, I don't remember how many nights. I think she stayed at my house um, for a night or two. I don't remember specifics. Uh, majority of the time, she she got a hotel in town. Um, it wasn't long that we all stayed in the house because we had to leave. So, when when she got to town, and I think you said, did she come straight to your house? I saw her for the first time uh, at the sheriff's office, El Paso County Sheriff's Office downtown. Okay. Well, was she staying somewhere in Colorado? Did did she to stay? Did she go to your house after? So yeah. So she, from my recollection, she landed. Came straight to the sheriff's office. I don't know if she did anything in between, but I saw her at the sheriff's office. We left there, I think, in my truck and went home to my, to my residence, 6627. Okay. Drive. Did the fact that Landon was going to be staying in your house at 6627 cause tension between you and the defendant? Uh, I, I, from her perspective, I can't, well, I can't speak for her perspective. I didn't see their need for tension because there's a little boy missing and we got all, we got to fight together at that point. Okay. So, but... Was there tension between the two of you over that decision to allow Landon to be at the house? I believe it created some tension in, in, in her mind. Okay. Yeah. I, didn't, I, I didn't have that tension. No, sir. I'm just going to speak to right. you. A disagreement, though. Did she get mad at you for allowing Landon to be? Yeah, we disagreed on that, on that note, yes. Okay. Uh, at some point, then, did that cause the defendant to actually move out of the Mandan Drive house? And I'm not asking you for specific days, just a yes or no. I believe I, I believe that's what she said caused her the defendant caused that caused her to move out. Yes, I'm going to object at this point. It's unclear if he's just speculating as to what was going on in uh, the defendant's mind, or if this was actually verbalized to him. If it was verbalized to him, I think he's going to testify. If he's just speculating as what she was thinking, I think it's inappropriate. I agree. I don't think that he can testify as to what she was thinking at the time. He can testify as to what she did. He can testify as to what she said. And that's what I'm trying to to okay. get across here. And I'm actually asking for a physical thing. Did she physically go to the house and take things out of the house and move out? She did, absolutely. Okay. Roughly when did that occur? Uh, within the first week. Okay. I, I don't remember the exact dates. I'm sure we'll get to that. 
Okay. And so if we can put up uh, People's Exhibit 26. Twenty six hasn't been admitted yet. Uh, I move for admission of twenty one through. Oh, you're right. 31. That's right. Yep. I'm sorry. Whoops. Go ahead. All right. What is depicted in people's twenty six? Uh, this would have been the defendant's uh, closet in the master um, master bedroom bathroom area. Um, looks like it's been emptied out. Okay, so did you move anything out of that closet? No, sir, I did not. Who did? Uh, the defendant. There's still some things that were left behind, it looks like? Yes, sir, it appears so. Are those some of the defendant's items as well? It may be hard to tell. But it's hard to tell. I mean, I mean, that, you mean be specific here? I mean, some of that stuff is mine, my items, but... so. I'm asking more about the things hanging. It looks like there's a belt or something and then some sort of a jacket maybe. This belt looks like it would have been mine. Actually, I, I remember it because I had that little crease in it. And I do, I cannot tell what jacket that is to be specific about it. Okay. And then People's Exhibit 27. Is this another view of that same closet? Yes. So that would have been my sweater. Uh, I don't know whose sweatshirt that is. Um, and those are linens from our, our bedroom. Linens from your bedroom? Yeah, up here in the top corner from our bed. Okay. And then, um, so, looks like um, you said the defendant came in there and moved all those things out. Yes, sir. Uh, did you, you didn't help her at all? No, sir, there were other people helping her. Okay. And then I want to jump now to People's Exhibit 28. What is this? So this was Harley's room and uh, the door to Harley's room would have been over in this area. And then that's a door into her closet. Okay. And then people's 29. And that's walking into her closet. It looks like her being Harley. Harley. Yes. I'm sorry. So the uh, clothes and the shoes and whatnot, is that all Harley's, Those are Harley's shoes? Yes, sir. Uh, and then when the defendant moved out, uh, the week of that 27th. Uh, did Harley also move out? Harley did, yes, sir. Let's move on to People's Exhibit 30. Is that Harley's clothes hanging in that closet? Yes, sir. And People's 31. Is that the way the closet looked after Harley and Letitia moved out later the week of the 27th? Yes, sir. You can take that down now, Judge. Thank you. I want to go through and have you describe uh, for us how you all would communicate. Did each person basically in the family, and when I say each person, I mean you, the defendant, Harley, have cell phones? We, all three of us did, yes, sir. With separate phone numbers? Separate phone numbers, yes, sir. And then was there a, a fourth phone number that was assigned to Gannon and Lena? Yes, sir. It was like the kid's phone, yes, sir. Yeah. What, what was your phone number back then? My phone number, uh, 843 Four seven eight six seven one four. Who was the provider for that phone number? I was. I'm sorry, the cell phone provider. Oh, AT and T. Okay. And then what about uh, Gannon's or the kids' phone? Uh, eight four three. I remember it was six seven two four because it was just one digit off of my end. I don't remember the middle three. Okay. So eight four three area code. Mm -hmm. You have to say yes or no. Yes. Sorry. Okay. And then the last four six seven two four. Six seven two four. Okay. Who was the cell phone provider for that phone? AT&T. And then let's talk about Harley. Do you remember her phone number at that time? I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Do you know who the cell phone provider was? It was AT&T. AT&T. Also 843 area code for sure. What is 843 area code? That's uh, uh, coastal South Carolina at okay. the time. And then... Um, what about the defendant? Did she also have a cell phone? She did. Who was the cell phone provider for that phone? AT&T. Do you know her phone number? Yeah, eight four. yes sir, 843-655-7460. During the course of the investigation, uh, did law enforcement ask you for access to the phone associated with the kids or Gannon's phone? Yes, sir.
we'll come back to that. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about vehicles. Um, what was your vehicle? I had a, I think it's, I believe it was 2016, but a Nissan Frontier. It was red, had a six inch lift on it, some big mud tires. Was it a Titan? No, it was a Frontier. Frontier? Nissan okay. Frontier. And you said what year was it? I believe 2016, either 2015 or 2016. Okay. Who typically drove that vehicle? Typically I did. Anybody else drive it? Uh, t uh, the defendant from time to time. Did she like driving it? I, I don't remember ever enjoying driving it. Okay. And then what about Harley? We saw a picture of it, but that was a white VW Jetta, I think you said? Yes, sir. 2018, I believe. And then what about the defendant? She had, uh, I think it was 2019, but a Tiguan, a black Tiguan with black rims and kind of blacked out uh, tint on her windows. Did you all own that vehicle? No, that was a lease. So now I want to jump back to what we were talking about earlier when she picked you up at the airport. Did she give you a reason? Did she say why she wanted to drive a rental vehicle as opposed to her normal vehicle? Yeah, her reasoning was we would be doing a lot of searching and driving around looking for Gannon and be due to her vehicle being a lease, she didn't want to go over the mileage on whatever those requirements or allotments were. What kind of vehicle did she rent? A little small. I don't remember. I think maybe a Kia. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a small little um, sedan. What color was it? Leaf silver. Was it white maybe? Maybe white. You don't have a good memory of that? I don't because we just parked it in the driveway and drove my truck around. So, which made totally no sense. So let's talk about um, that. Did you actually own the pickup at that time? I did. Not a lease issue. No, it was, I was paying the note off, but I mean, I owned it. It was okay. my name. Why was it um, strange to you, the way you said this earlier, that there was a rented vehicle as opposed to her normal Tiguan vehicle that she was picking you up in? Once again, and I, I know I've made this statement already about something else, but in, in these moments when it's, it's an emergency, things like miles on your car don't matter. It doesn't matter what car we drive if we're going searching. Um, so it just, and, and in the moment, I'm just like, whatever, just do what you want. But, you know, but yeah, it didn't make any sense. Did she tell you where the Tiguan was? Uh, she did. She said it was, um, so, you know, because I asked, it brings back, remember, I asked, how did you get to the airport if your car is not here? Well, I parked it at French Elementary School, which is where she was employed. And one of my coworkers brought me, or former co whatever it was, one of my coworkers brought me to the airport and dropped me off. So just so we're clear, you asked her about that, and she told you that one of her coworkers drove her to the airport and dropped her off. Absolutely. Is French Elementary School close to the Mandan Drive address? I mean, it's on the south end of town, but I mean, it's, it's a couple miles away. Okay. Did you ever drive over to French Elementary School to look for that vehicle? I did. Did you find it there? I did not. Did you find that odd? Absolutely. Let's talk about um, Gannon's relationship with the defendant. How would you describe that relationship? Trusting. Um, I w I, I'm c comfortable saying I think he had love in his heart for her. Um, I don't think he was afraid of her or any fear for her. I, I, one of the things about Gannon that is special, and I think it's special about a lot of young boys, he, he absolutely loved his mom. And he had some of that same love for Tisha too. So he was a mama's boy? He was, absolutely. How was, um, I guess, who, who would discipline the kids? And when I say the kids, I'm talking about the little ones. So Lena and Gannon. Uh, both of us, both myself and the defendant. I want to get into now your relationship with the defendant. We talked about how you met her. <clears throat> How would you describe the relationship? Was it a loving relationship? Uh, what was it? At, um, at what point? Well, let's start at the beginning. 
I think loving is a good example. It was fun. It was, as you brought up, I was coming off of a divorce. So yeah, it was fresh. It was new. Um, I had a good time. You know, I didn't have custody of the kids at that point. So we were a little bit more free and, you know, things we could do. How old were Gannon and Lena when you met the defendant? When I met her? Yep. Um, two and five, I believe. I think that's right. When did you first move in together? I, so my officer school took me through um, August. I had to go to a two week phase in Alabama. We, uh, Landon and I sold the house and it was either, I think I signed the papers and it sold while I was gone, but right in that same time frame, late July, early August, when I got back is when I, I, I might have moved my stuff into where sh we started renting a house, but I moved in late August. Of what year? Like that. Uh, 20, uh, 14. When did you first meet Harley? Uh, earlier in 2014, uh, I maybe March. Uh, I, I remember. Well, let me back up. I, I had exposure to her at the softball games and stuff, but I never really, you know, had a conversation with, you know, with her. But uh, when I first met her, I actually remember helping her doing her homework the first time I met her. Um, she was doing some vocabulary. I don't know why that stands out, but yeah, I was at Tisha's apartment in uh, spring of. 2014. When were you officially commissioned in the National Guard? I uh, took my commission June 9th, 2016. Did you change your uh, duty assignment roughly around that same time? Yeah, I was in National Guards, as you mentioned, is mostly reserved. So before my I commissioned, I was enlisted, uh, made it up to some first class E7 and in, in active guard status. I had to resign my full time in order to take my commission. And then I was in the reserve status for about uh, eight months, nine months before I went to Alaska. Okay, so what I'm asking is, um, did you have to change where you were living and where you were assigned with the National Guard after you took your commission? Not immediately. Did you at some point move to Columbia, South Carolina? I didn't move there. I had, when I, uh, as soon as I commissioned, like I said, I, it's kind of hard to explain. National Guard's a little different. I, I resigned my full-time status, but you can get on temporary orders. And so I was on temporary orders in Columbia for a couple months, um, but I was close enough where I could commute um, you know, half the time or whatever. Okay. Um, but I just stayed at the armory in Columbia, South Carolina. So that's where, when you say you stayed there, that's where you were working. I worked there and then I, I got a, you know, cot and stayed in an extra room down the hall or whatever it was. And then the house that you mentioned earlier in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, uh, did you and the defendant buy that house? Right around that same time. Yes, sir. Do you remember going to Oklahoma roughly around that same time as well? I did. I wasn't slated to go until January. And th this trip to Oklahoma would have been for six months. And this was for my basic officer course, not to be confused with the two weeks in 2020. Right. Um, so I, I went there. I was slated to go in January, but somebody dropped out. So I was able to go, I think, the end of July. And it took me through December, um, just shy of six months. Did you take um, either Gannon and Lena with you to Oklahoma for the six month period? I did not. At that point, they uh, their mother still had majority custody. So, uh, but they did come and visit. There was a few uh, holidays or whatever, and I came home a couple of times to visit during that that time period. What about the defendant? Did she ever come to Oklahoma to visit? The defendant did, as well as Harley. Did she ever move to Oklahoma during that six month period with you? She never moved. I I, I don't remember her staying at maximum a week. I don't even think she stayed that long at any point. Was it that year, 2016, when you learned of the job up in Alaska? I did. While I was in Oklahoma, I learned of that. Was that something that interested you? Absolutely. Did you apply to that position? Absolutely. When you finished that training in, in uh, Oklahoma in 2016, where did you go after finishing that training? I came uh, home 
uh, say home, but came to our the house that the defendant and I owned in Myrtle Beach. Okay. When did you actually get transferred up to Alaska? If you uh, can tell us. Yeah. So I, I mean, I spoke to this earlier. Uh, I came here for schooling. Uh, I got here, I think April 1st, did two months here. And then I took the trip with the kids up to Alaska. So I think June 9th or something like that, I, I got up there, but I was on orders in the Alaska guard on my way here. Um, and then just did my training. So you said June, what year are we talking about? Uh, 2017 once okay. again. Yeah. What was the, um, I'm a Navy guy, so I don't understand National Guard. Okay. Uh, is it, are they bases, forts? What are they called? Uh, most of the time, your typical National Guard duty is going to be at an armory, like a local reserve center or something. They're all over Colorado Springs. Uh, this one is a little different because it was an active guard unit, uh, which is kind of rare in the guard. But uh, it was at Fort Greeley, Alaska. I was stationed and lived on base. So how long were you stationed up at Fort Greeley? Uh, just shy of two years. Uh, like, as I mentioned, I got hired on in March, uh, went to my school here, and then I, um, that was 2017, and then February 2019, I was transferred here. Was it roughly around that time that you um, actually filed for custody of Gannon and Lena? No, that was, I, I think I actually filed um, for custody before I left to Alaska. So is that the time period you're talking about? Yeah, so when did you file for custody of Gannon and Lane? So like February or March of 2017. I don't remember specific dates, but it was before I was leaving. Yes, sir. Do you remember um, a specific incident occurring prior to you leaving for training where you and the defendant got into an argument? Hmm. Uh, yes, In sir. 2017? In 2017. <coughs> don't remember. Is there more you can give me? Oh, I can't. Specific? I can't ask you leading questions. So okay. I got to ask an open-ended question. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I, I think we did get into an argument, a verbal argument about me taking the job in Alaska. That was a, 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 a sort of point of tension for sure. Did she tell you whether she was supportive of you taking that job in Alaska or not? I don't remember specifically if she said supportive, but all indications were no. Uh, was that the? sort of the source of the fight? Uh, I would say yes. That was the source of many verbal disagreements and arguments in that time period. Were you all living together at that particular time? Yes, this, sir. When this fight occurred? Yes, sir, in the house in Myrtle Beach. Okay, did, did the defendant take specific action regarding your belongings in the house? Yeah, the day, yes, sir, the day I was supposed to leave um, to come to Colorado for training, uh, which would have been late March, I don't remember the specific date. Yeah, she threw all my stuff in the front yard and whatever, just said I'm done with you kind of thing. Said that, so you said, she said I'm done with you kind of thing? And I'm not quoting directly, but it, that's the theme of it. I'm done, you take your stuff and go and whatever. Did the, obviously the relationship didn't end then, is that right? No, I, I think it was actually about a week or eight or nine days before we, we talked again. Uh, not a lot of communication in those, I didn't talk to her the whole trip here and then it was a couple of days after I got here, I think. So yeah, it was tough times. You mentioned earlier that uh, the defendant actually did come up to Alaska. Yes, sir. When did that occur? Various times. I, I don't know. I don't remember specifically when she first showed up. I would, had already been there for a while, um, but she did come and then stayed for a week or two, two or three weeks here, a month there. I mean, it was, she never moved there. I never felt like she moved there, I should say. Well, and I'm probably just asking a bad question, but was there a period of time where it seemed as if uh, there was a move uh, where she actually brought Harley with her to Alaska. Yes, there was a period of time, and this would have been uh, that first summer, because what she told me was that she was looking for a job at the school and that she had enrolled Harley at the school uh, in Delta Junction is the town, but that she was enrolled there. And then, you know, that's where we're at. Delta Junction, Alaska. Yeah, which is where Fort Greeley, the base is located, is Delta okay. Junction. So did her, the defendant and Harley actually come to Alaska during that time frame? They did. There have been sometime uh, July, June or July. I don't remember how long they stayed, like I said, but. 
Did um, did the defendant ever tell you? I'm, I thought. Did you say something, Judge? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, did the um, defendant ever tell you whether she enjoyed being in Alaska? She actually told me the opposite quite a bit. That she hated it there. That we should give it back to Russia. So give Alaska back yeah, to Russia. Just give, it, just give it to them because yeah. it's so bad up there. Would the defendant use manipulation on you in your relationship? Absolutely. Objection calls for speculation. You're ruled. Go ahead, you can answer. Absolutely. In this time period that we're talking about where you were in Alaska um, and she's telling you that she hated it, um, did she manipulate that situation to try to get you to leave that uh, duty station? Yes, sir. At the end, she did. When you say the end, what do you mean by the end? By the end, that's what her manipulating a situation is what led me to leave Alaska. When did the manipulation in that regard change or, or cause you to start to leave Alaska? That specific uh, incident or set of incidents would have been in the fall of 2018. What was the what was the nature of that manipulation? Objection 404B. Council approach, please. So uh, during when they do the 20 minute break, we're going to watch that candle video, video that they're referring to. I just want to say too, thank you to the mods and everybody that's helping out with uh, pictures and information um, behind the scenes. Uh, so I will show. We'll talk about the candle video. We're hearing about this situation with the Letitia and Al, the father. Which I, I'm curious myself to know what issues they've had, you know, what besides the, you know, the murder that happened. Because th this could also go to the whole thing of like, they're saying that she had this lapse of insanity or sanity, or whatever. Um, really curious about that. I have a couple of videos too to show uh, that we'll watch too when we get breaks and stuff between. If you guys could hit the like button, please, I'd appreciate that. It helps out the algorithm. Also, if you can subscribe, if you're not subscribed, we're going to be covering this trial every day. I think most of the time, 11 a.m., but there'll be days where I'll start maybe 15 minutes early and we can chat a little bit and talk. Um, and also, I'm hearing that on Thursdays, there's no trial. So just a heads up with that. So Thursdays and the weekends, no trial. So, uh, just so you know, um, and we'll try to address whatever, uh, comes up to some people. Leticia, by the way, oh, he can't see her now, but she's hiding off to the side, kind of like behind a screen, a monitor, kind of covering her face a little bit with her hands. Looking kind of creepy. I saw some people like criticizing the father too, which I don't really get. I don't know the whole story, but like the guy was deployed working. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, and then there was like claims of cheating or something like that, which I don't know. Um, and even if it w did happen, which I, I heard that there was like no proof. I don't know. I, like, again, I'm just new to the story. But even if he did, theoretically, like, I, I, it's like people are co-signing that. It's like, yeah, so he deserves to have the child killed. Like, I don't, I don't understand the logic behind that. Um, yeah, the child should die because it, it's allegedly, let's say if he did cheat, he cheated. Like, I, I'm not sure how that equates to killing a child. It's like a co-sign or something. It's kind of weird to me. Um, So yeah, and, and I think like, I think on the off days or the time that I have off, I'm gonna try to familiarize myself more with what happened. Cause, oh, by the way, I- All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're break. gonna take a break uh, until about uh, 10.40. Again, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not discuss the case with anyone else. Do not do your own investigation about any aspect of this case. 
Um, and if we can have everyone back in the uh, Drew room ready to go at 1040, we should be able to start on time at that point. All right, will you do it, please? About 20 minutes. <laughs> So the other day I did a video. If you're unfamiliar about the story, I did a video on the affidavit. Okay. Um, it's a really good video. If you're and completely some unfamiliar, you should check out this video because it'll give you an idea. At least of that day and the planning and all the stuff that she did. I should have put affidavit in the title, actually. Now that I think about it. But uh, we went over a lot of this stuff. What she did with the vehicle. The day Thank of you. The may all be seated. The record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom. We were having a uh, discussion at the bench uh, regarding uh, the permissible areas to go into. And it seems to me, Mr. Allen, that what you can do is uh, I think it's probably safer just to use some leading questions, uh, talk with uh, your witness as well. Um, but I do think that he can talk, as I understand it, um, what the evidence is going to be or um, the offered evidence is going to be is that. Ms. Stauk made a claim regarding uh, sexual harassment That's right. uh, against some other people in his unit uh, that may have made it uncomfortable for uh, Mr. Stauk to remain uh, in that unit. And apparently that's why uh, he decided to change duty station. Um, we're not going to get into what the substance of those allegations were mr stout you would be prohibited from saying or testifying whether or not you believed those allegations whether or not you thought she was making them up those kinds of things you can say that she made them and you can say that you can testify about uh how that made you feel and why you wanted to move but you cannot testify about whether or not you thought they were true unless she told you something different okay all right. Well, Judge, I think it's it's um, as I was saying at the bench, it's a form of manipulation to get that to happen. And so I do think it would be proper for him to say whether it was a, an attempt by the defendant to manipulate him being assigned to that duty station. He can leading, go ahead, leading to him then changing duty stations to Colorado. He can testify that he thought she was manipulating him, um, but he cannot testify that that's what she thought. There you go. Um, because in this case, I do think that there's some issue about <clears throat> um, whether or not the defendant may have manipulated certain events or whether or not the defendant may have manipulated certain conduct um, at some point in time. And so I do think that that is uh, relevant. I think it's admissible. I think it goes to some of the heart of the issue of the evidence in this case. Um, so I think that he can testify as to whether or not he thought he was being manipulated um, and leave it at that. I don't think he can go any further than that. Mr. Tolini. Yeah. And so I've got a couple different. Objects go ahead. Here. I mean, one, basically what we're talking about, at least it sounds to me and I'm making the record that we're talking about propensity evidence. She manipulated him in Alaska therefore, when she was doing this other stuff in 20 in January of 2020, February of 2020 it must have been manipulation of well, that is propensity. Um, further, there has been no 404B notice um, filed by the district attorney of the prior bad acts. Um, I'm unaware of any case that I've come across that does away with rule 404B just because we raised the issue of not guilty by reason of insanity. Obviously, we have some different experts that are going to come on that have been provided different evidence. Um, some of that may be described as 404B. Um, and so that expert that influence that expert's decision. I think it would be relevant and admissible through that expert. I just don't think it's admissible through this through this witness we have here, um, because whether or not he felt manipulated or not has no real bearing on what was going on in 2020, unless we're talking about propensity, or unless we're talking about other motive, other types of stuff that would need to be endorsed under 404B. Mr. Allen, Judge, um, they have put the defendant's mental condition into uh, relevance by claiming NGRI. Um, this. Witness specifically spent a lot of time with this defendant over many years. And so a case law is clear that he can comment on whether she was sane or not. And if she was having any mental health issues, which I do intend to get into, um, there is evidence that, as we know from preliminary hearing that the defendant attempted to manipulate uh, this investigation. And we're gonna have evidence from uh, different people on that uh, point as well. 
And uh, that's sort of the track record of this particular defendant. That's not a bad act. That's uh, mental condition evidence that they have put in play by claiming NGRI. I, I tend to agree with the prosecution here. Um, I've, I've read the, uh, I have read all of the uh, psychological examinations, the competency um, and the sanity examinations. Um, I'm also familiar with the facts that are uh, involved in this case. I don't think it's necessarily propensity, but I also think that uh, it would be appropriate uh, to ask uh, any of the experts that are coming um, whether or not um, conduct by the defendant in uh, 20, I think this was 20, fall of 2018, um, would be an example of uh, manipulation by the defendant. And if this testimony is not permitted at this point in time, or this evidence is not admitted at this point in time, there wouldn't be a basis by which to ask the expert that question when they take the stand. Well, so I, I understand that you disagree, uh, but I think that it's, I do think that's appropriate. I think it is more of intrinsic rather than extrinsic evidence. Um, so I am going to allow it. But again, uh, Mr. Stout will not be permitted to say whether or not uh, he believed that those allegations were false or not. Uh, and uh, he can testify as to how, what happened, how he reacted to it. Um, and we're dealing with a relationship between the people. It, you know, it has a lot to do with uh, his mental state, the, uh, Mr. Stout's mental state at the time that the investigation was going on based on his history with the defendant. It also has something to do with the way that the defendant may have acted uh, at the time all of this happened based on her history with him. So I'm, I'm going to allow it um, and you can do it through leading questions. All right. Okay. Any questions? All right, with that, we will take our break. Uh, and so if Ms. Stout needs a break, uh, we need to do that now. Oh, all right. Thank you, Mr. Trook. All right, court will be in recess. Thank you. Okay, okay. Mr. Stout, you may want to talk with Mr. Allen about what the parade is. No, she's standing up. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. She, she still had in her face. So, all right, let me call. I'm going to call. I want to do the candle. We have like, I think we have 20 minutes. I want to, want to do the call digs first. To speak on the cheating thing a little bit. Okay. The alleged cheating thing. I don't know the whole situation. There's a few people in the chat that, uh, so they're saying it wasn't a cosign oh, of the murder, but that, so this person here, everything, Erica, I know you're lying. Not one person is threat saying Gannon should have died. What we're saying is that is not so innocent and does hold blame. So you're saying he holds blame for the murder of Gannon. Is how you feel? Okay. <laughs> and then. So Reds just. I was trying to think of any Reds just. I can't. He's going to be a pop in my head. Let me see if I can. Let me mute this. Because I, th I think they're going to do a hot mic, right? Let me just mute it for a second. Mute that. Oh no, you know what? Hold on. Let me do this real quick. I'll I'll get the finest bottled water they have. There you go. I think I got it. Okay. And then Mel's Gremlins. By the way, I, I like that name. I don't know if you did that for me or that's something else. Mel's Gremlins. That's, that's kind of a nice name. I don't think it's a matter of him deserving the brutal murder of his son. I think it shows a basis for Letitia's anger and possibility a basis for her anger. Maybe. Maybe so. But are, are they going to talk about that or not? And the only thing I don't get to, when I hear things like that, sometimes it's kind of weird to me because it, to me, it's like, it's like people that are like, I, I sometimes just this analogy, somebody cuts off somebody on the road and the person that got cut off goes and shoots them. And then you're like, well, that person shouldn't have cut them off. So now he's dead kind of shit. But, and it's just like, it's always such a weird thing. I don't know if that's the right kind of analogy. Um, uh, it, it, and I think it comes a lot of times from women because they feel like, oh, well, like, anytime like some woman did some crazy shit to a guy, and the guy's telling the story. They're like, well, what did you do? 
like there has to be some sort of just like women they did just seem to find it justifiable uh to do some crazy shit because they think you did something so they can take it to the next level to the extreme level and it's like somewhat well it's his fault too or whatever you know i don't know whether it's dv or whatever else and actually you can say it the other way around too male uh for a guy and a woman like the reverse way but it, it's just it's kind of like a a, a weird <laughs> i don't know but again i'm on the outside looking let me let me see uh let's see let's talk to somebody one of the day one people that have been covering this story and because i wonder if that if are they even going to bring it up in the trial or would that go against their insanity thing and, and it could be the case like maybe when we see the google searches and the google searches why wasn't there google searches about cheating then or, or was there and they didn't bring it up you would have think that would have thought because the google searches that i saw she was like unhappy about being like a stepmother she said that she had sent them pictures and he didn't um he didn't say anything about the pictures let's see Let's do it. Hello. Hi. Hi. They How are you? Me. Good. <laughs> Hi, chat. Hey, what can you talk a little bit about? I've heard I've heard a little bit of rumblings about the cheating thing, and so like, what what is it? So. Letitia suspected I was cheating okay. because the way you get them is the way you lose them. He did have an affair mm. when he was still with Landon okay. and got with her. Okay. She didn't like that he was gone and she didn't like being a glorified babysitter. We all see in the Google searches that she was applying for jobs as a flight attendant and everything else. Mm. Shortly after his divorce, he did get into another relationship. That relationship ended. He then got into another relationship and is now married to that woman. Wait, he wait, was how not many and has not. He's been in two relationships since the divorce. Oh, wait, you're talking about the divorce of Letitia? Yep. Okay, no, no, no. He divorced Letitia, okay, okay, okay. dated a girl, and everybody's like, oh, he was cheating because it was quick. But that girl even said, I didn't know him then. It was no affair, whatever. And then he didn't marry that woman. He married the next woman. He is married. He now claims to have five children, including Gannon and Lana, all of that. But... She suspected he was having an affair because their marriage was going to crap. So Letitia did. Did she like post about it somewhere? Or like... She did. And the Facebook okay. groups that we were all part of, okay. we got to hear about all of it, where she was trashing Landon, where she was trashing Al, and she was saying that neither one of them cared. But it's important for everybody to remember, they all three had legal custody of those kids. Not marital rights. She had legal custody of those children. She was on the custody papers. All three Leticia parents was. had custody, yes. Oh, wow. So Landon, Letitia, and Al all have custody rights to those kids. Oh, wow. It wasn't just, like, a random thing. He was really, truly believing she was a good parent. And if you watch Harley's video, she does this thing for her mom where she does this huge montage about her mother being the most amazing woman and the biggest inspiration. And this was before we knew about the murder, and it came out, and everybody's like, oh, my God, it's disgusting. But they very much had a different perception of who she was versus what happened. Okay. So he so was. So the people that followed from the beginning know this is. So a he lot was more cheating. Mess. He was not cheating. What the hell? I thought. No, the girl that he dated right after the divorce said that she did not know no. him. I don't care about after Letitia. the divorce. I'm talking about from the beginning. Was, no, when, when Letitia never, was. There's no proof that he ever cheated on Letitia. Oh, okay. I was he confused. did cheat on Landon with Letitia, but there's absolutely no proof oh, he cheated. Oh, okay, okay. It so, was suspected. She thought he was cheating. And people in the groups thought, because he got into a relationship so quickly after he divorced Letitia, that he must have been having an affair. But there's no proof anywhere that he was cheating. The oh, only okay, proof okay. was that he went away on his deployments, because he's in the, the guards. He has to. And she probably thinks, yeah, she did what shit. she did. Yeah. Um. Okay, so so the way okay, so obviously Lambden and Al were together first. They were married, and mm -hmm. towards the end of their whatever, what well, they divorced, they weren't divorced yet when he got with Letitia, right? Apparently, there was an affair, and that's why the whole the way you get them is the way you lose them right, mentality. Right, right, right. 
That's and Landon didn't have her kids because she had a very high risk, medically complex pregnancy with her younger child and they were staying with them. They had established friendships and she made the sacrifice to say, okay, enroll them in school since they've already made friendships. And that's important when you're first in school and she still got them regularly. She got them on all the holidays. She went and got them every weekend, but they didn't live close because of military moves. So people saying, well, mom should have had custody. A lot of parents have that dynamic in broken families. Mm. And so why did Letitia have custody now of, uh, so she's included on the custody because of the fact that he's military. If he didn't have a secondary person, he would not be allowed to do his deployments. The military doesn't really like single parents. And once you're divorced, you're kind of a single parent. Oh. So by her getting legal custody, it protected his job. Oh, okay. And, and she, so, I mean, she had legal rights to those children. It wasn't just, uh, oh, this is the girl I'm sleeping with. Let me just let her have my kids. Okay. And, and then the, one of the final things, maybe I'll call you another time, but one of the other final things, so I can do the candle video, um, the whole thing, because a lot of people are like the Landon thing, like what happened with that or whatever? Like what was the custody situation? Like I know you said something like, like the whole they had shared custody when they were close. And then mm -hmm. when she got sick with her pregnancy, she had sent the kids to be with dad and, and Letitia because she was in the hospital. And her okay. husband at the time was Mike, not really the greatest guy. They're divorced now. He's got some addiction and other legal problems. And it was just better for the children to have a stable home with two healthy parents because that's what they all thought at the time. Okay. They all thought that was the better place. And they did, the kids had a good relationship with Harley. They appeared to have a good relationship with Leticia. And when Al was home, it was good. Okay. So for Landon, I'm sick. I'm in the hospital on bed rest. Let me send my kids to their father and their stepmother, where they have a step sibling and things are safe, solid, and secure. Okay. It was no bad intention. Okay. And, and now, last short thing. So, before, so, we, so the introduction to the candle video. The candle video was the day before the murder. The candle video was recorded by Letitia the day before the murder. If you listen closely, you'll listen to TMZ talking about Kobe Bryant's helicopter crash. Okay. And then she's, she goes to Gannon and says, I need you to tell me Pinky Promise swear it's an accident. And he's like, it was an accident. And then she goes on explaining that they'll sell the couch. They'll do whatever they have to do. So the landlord doesn't kick them out. And what's the and then the next day she goes to Petco and buys a bunch of coats for her dogs. <laughs> and what's the significance of this candle video? Like, cause I, I know it was like a thing for everybody. Like it's just, um, it kind of suggests that there might have been some abuse the night before. And if you watch the neighbor video, it kind of looks like he's limping and struggling to walk. He missed school that day. She claimed it was for a stomach problem. People think it was because she beat the crap out of him. And okay. listening to Gannon crying, it almost sounds like he's injured. Okay. And and the other thing, and the, the what final, final thing, and there was a fake video of this going around well it was an altered video right they, it was an altered video at the end where it's they say that it's that he said i'm bleeding right at the very end i watched it live when she posted it on her facebook it was in all those groups it never said i'm bleeding okay. the original video was like 52 seconds the one that says i'm bleeding is a hundred and one minute and eight seconds or something like that okay nobody it's been a big fight for this forever okay. the one that she posted never said i'm bleeding okay gotcha and the screen recording that I sent you is the one from her Facebook page. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. All right. Bye. That's Diggs. That's one of the people that um, she mods. She's a mod, and she also helps out a lot. With, uh, well, she, they, she's been one of the people, too, that have been on the case from day one. So uh, and there's a couple people that have been like that. So I, I figured let's just get the information. Um. Okay. Let's check this out. This is the candle video. A lot of people have talked about this. I actually haven't watched this yet. I've had it sent to me a couple of times. Let's just watch this one. Big stuff. Gannon, I promise this is the last time I'm gonna ask you. I'm just freaked out, okay? Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? Okay, you promise. You promise. On purpose. Pinky promise. Pinky. Okay. All right. So listen, listen. We're, all right. I'm, we're gonna have to sell stuff to fix it. Okay. 
So okay. we figure out what we're going to sell. We can sell the sofa. We can sell whatever. Because we got to get it fixed. So, lady, don't be mad at us and kick us out of the house. Okay? <coughs> you got it? So this was the day before the murder, and you could you can hear TMZ in the background. Let me just play the one that um, Big Scream recorded as well. So that that one was on Reddit that they posted it. Let's see here. Well, devastating. Initially, Scott, I can't. I think I need a codec that I I gotta download a codec pack. Let me try again. Well devastating. Initially, Scott, I can't lie when the TMZ information was Gannon, initially... I promise this is the last time I'm gonna ask you. I'm just freaked out, okay? Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? He did it. Okay, you promise. He promised. On purpose. Pinky promise. Pinky. Okay, all right, so listen. Listen. We're, all right, I'm, we're going to have to sell stuff to fix it. Okay? okay? So we figure out what we got to sell. We can sell the sofa. We can sell whatever. Because we got to get it fixed. So, uh -huh. lady, don't be mad at us and kick us out of the house. Okay. Kicked out of the house because of this you got it? candle shit. So, I I guess it was like a spill candle or something, and there's and it got on the carpet. And if you if you've watched the affidavit video that I did, this was part of her like story too. That like she went to was it Eduardo? There was this damage to the carpet, and so it needed to be cut out. And so I got Eduardo, and Eduardo held me captive, and Ard me, and all this kind of shit. This was part of her story, so I guess she posted it to try to prove her story. And she claimed that Eduardo, I think, was the one that took Gannon after, or was it after she changed her story multiple times? Like Gannon ran away? I don't know, it's so many stories. Such a weird thing to make such a big deal. I understand it can be frustrating sometimes, but like to put the pressure on a kid, like, oh, we're gonna have to sell a couch or whatever, or we're gonna get kicked out of the house or get your home and stuff. Um, Manipulation right there. That's manipulative. And then make a and why'd you record this in the first place? It's a weird thing to record. You know? So that's the candle thing that people have been talking about. My first time seeing it. Whatever. Cause we gotta get it fixed. Alright, let's see. I had asked you before uh, whether she okay. was happy being assigned, having you all living up in Alaska, and I think you said no. Absolutely not, yes. Um, did this claim of sexual harassment, not asking you whether it was true or not, uh, but did that lead to you eventually leaving Alaska and coming to Colorado? Yes, sir, it did. Were there two specific things that um, you witnessed that were sort of at the heart of these sexual harassment claims? Yes, sir. Uh, did one of those involve Captain Jenkins? Yes, sir. Uh, was that a time when you were at some establishment and there was some drinking involved? Uh, yeah, me and Tisha, uh, me and the defendant showed up for dinner and the, the other person was already there and had been drinking. Yes, sir. The other person being Captain, Captain Jenkins. Jenkins? Yes, sir. Was that one of the issues that the defendant raised? as the basis for sexual harassment uh that that situation yes sir a comment he had made okay and we're not calling captain jenkins so we don't need to get into what he said yes, okay sir. Uh, and then as it relates to colonel ortega did you witness a specific event that was an interaction between lieutenant colonel ortega and the defendant yes sir uh what was that specific thing let me describe the event. Yes, uh, that you so, witnessed. I so I was the S one, which is the personnel officer um, for the battalion. Uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Ortega was the battalion commander. Uh, I was still in the office. Um, the defendant was coming to pick me up because we only had one vehicle in Alaska, 
and uh, she was coming from the house to pick me up. And when I came out of the building, he was leaning over into the truck, talking to her. I, I, I don't know what they were talking about or anything. And then as soon as he saw me, he left, uh, didn't stop and, uh, you know, communicate with me, just left and walked away. And that was it. Okay. And so did the defendant specifically use that incident as another part of the allegation of sexual harassment? Yes, sir. Did she file a formal complaint with your command? There was a, I don't know, I don't think it was with the command. I think it went through the state. So okay. Alaska National Guard. I don't, I don't know the specifics of it. The, the, my only involvement was to basically say what I just said. Okay. So what I'm asking you is, um, when I say command, again, I'm, I'm okay. not in, that in, informed no. on National Guard. Did she inform the National Guard of this complaint of yes. sexual harassment? Yes, sir. And you knew that? Yes, sir. Did that cause you issues in your uh, unit? Yes, sir. And did that uh, eventually lead to you transferring from Alaska? Yes, sir. Was there a time when she specifically sent you a text uh, and told you that she was pregnant? Yes. It, and did that text also include a um, ultrasound picture? Yes. Ooh. Did she tell you that she was actually pregnant with twins? Yes, sir. Was that another form of manipulation? Yes, sir. I had to do that to me one time. You can ask him how he felt sure. about it. Um, did you? Um, did the defendant ever give birth to twins? No, sir. Uh, did it ever turn out that she was pregnant with twins? No, sir. Sustained. Jury will disregard that answer. Well, did you ever go to any um, doctor's appointments with the defendant? For that specific instance, no. Okay. Um, do you know whether she went to any doctor's appointments for those, that specific incident? I'm confident that she didn't. No, sir. So we talked about uh, the sexual harassment um, claim and that causing tension in your unit and that eventually leading to you transferring from Alaska, right? Yes, sir. Uh, when did that actual transfer occur? Uh, like I said previously, I, I, when I say boots on ground, I arrived here February 15th, I believe, 2019. And I think you had previously said that the defendant preceded your move to Colorado. Yes, sir. When did she leave Alaska? So... She wasn't in Alaska. Um, was, she came to Alaska for a couple weeks or a month, I think in December of, that would have been 2018. Um, the kids, she brought the kids with her, that being Gannon and Elena and Harley as well. And then we stayed there. Actually, we stayed in a house on uh, one of the bases, like a temporary house. And then, like I told you, they came ahead of me about a month and a half or so. Okay. So you're saying that they got to, they being the defendant and the kids. Yeah, all the names I listed, the defendant, Harley, Gannon, and Elena. Would that have been in January of 2019? I believe they came in January because we did Christmas in Alaska. And um, I think you had previously said that they, that the defendant actually found the 6627 Mandan Drive house, and that's where you all moved into. Yes, sir. Do you remember um, the defendant filing burglary um, allegations in 2019? Yes, sir. How many different ones did she file? I believe it was two, to my recollection. One of those specific claims was uh, a burglary in the fall of 2019, correct? Yes, sir. And there were some things that um, she pointed to to you to support these that as being a valid burglary claim. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, one of which was a hammer hanging from a string in the garage. Yes, sir. Uh, that included uh, potentially somebody had, had maybe got into the attic access in the garage. A squatter is how she referred to it. Was there ever a squatter in your house? No, sir. No one was ever found. Hmm. Uh, did you have an ammo can in the house? I did. Yes, sir. Uh, 
was it dumped out on the floor and made to look as if someone had rummaged through it? Objection, please. Stain, you can ask him wh what he found and what it looked like. Okay. Tell us what you remember about this ammo can. In this specific uh, break-in uh, allegation, the ammo can, I kept it, uh, I think, next to the bed or under the bed or something. <laughs> and it was open and dumped out like somebody had been rummaging through the ammo can. Um, another, the, one of the clothes hampers was dumped out and the bed was kind of pushed. Uh, the mattress was pushed off the box spring. Just enough to look like somebody had forced their way through that area. Did the defendant tell you that that was another uh, piece of evidence or sign that there had been a burglary in your house? She did. Was there also a gunshot claim? There was. Did this come from the defendant to you? Yes, sir. What did she say about that? She claimed that uh, she fired a one of the weapons, I don't remember which one, up the storm well. Um, that's pretty much what the summation okay. of it. So let's talk a little bit about that. Oh, one of the weapons you said. Uh, did you have firearms in the house? I did, yes, sir. What kind of weapons? Uh, I had a, a nine millimeter, uh, a Smith & Wesson nine millimeter compact. I had a, I don't remember the brand, but it was a black and Tiffany green uh, nine millimeter full size. I also had a uh, AR pistol type um, gun. There was a 20 gauge uh, Benelli youth shotgun and uh, a 12 gauge, it was all black shotgun, I forget the brand. And then I think there was at least one Smith & Wesson little 380 uh, compact as well. So when, you, when she's telling you that there was a weapon that she fired in the, I think you said the storm well, mm -hmm. is that the window well? Yeah, and the specific one was the window well um, next to, if you remember the picture where the computers were, there was a window well right behind those computers. That's the one she said that she fired it out of. Did you ever find a shell casing associated with that gunshot? No, sir. In that particular, those uh, pistols that you're talking about, the Smith & Wesson 9mm, that what sounds like a Tiffany green or blue 9mm and that 380, are those semi-automatic handguns? <clears throat> yes, sir. Are you familiar with some automatic handguns? Sir. Have you fired them? Uh, I, I don't know specifically the 380. So what I'm act asking is generalized. Oh, Have you yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, when you fire those weapons, does the slide um, automatically slide back and eject the shell casing? Ejects it and then loads the next round into the chamber. Did you ever see any evidence uh, that that gun had been fired in that window well in the basement? No, sir. Did the defendant ever admit to you that she made up those burglary claims? Yes, sir. What did she say? Uh, I don't remember specifics, but uh, I don't know how much you want me to elaborate, but I, I had to do some digging and eventually I found out that most of the story she had told was just not accurate and then she finally admitted to uh, making up the claims of break-ins. I don't remember if she gave a reason why either. In your mind, was that another attempt or attempts at manipulating what was happening in your relationship? Absolutely. Some point um, in 2019, did you and the family get into family counseling? Not family counseling. Um, well, counseling. Yeah, Gannon and Elena specifically. Okay. What about the defendant? To my knowledge, I don't think she had counseling. Okay. Did she make specific comments to you about Gannon that led to you wanting to get Gannon into this counseling? Yeah, that was, there was two reasons. Um, and do you want me to elaborate on that? Yes. Okay. As long as these are things that she told you as to things that led you to want to get Gannon into counseling. Yes, sir. One of the reasons is the, the one, the other reason was, like I said, said before he was a mama's boy and he, he, he both the kids had um, struggles with you know we had a little bit of back and forth of custody issues so that was part of the reason the other reason is she made a, a claim that he was coming after her to some degree um, he and, and Gannon her. coming after the defendant to some degree and so once again twofold mission with the counseling one to make sure he's dealing with 
his, you know, the situation with his mom and being apart from her. And then also the counseling should uncover anything else that's going on or any disdain he had for the defendant. Who was the defendant closer to as far as the two little kids? So Gannon and Lena. Lena, undoubtedly. Did you say undoubtedly? Absolutely, she was. Whose idea was it to move Gannon to the basement? It was mine. Okay. Did you ever witness um, Gannon displaying any behavior uh, that would support the claim that Gannon had it out for the defendant? Absolutely not towards no one. I, I absolutely never witnessed that period. Did you ever take uh, family trips together? With the defendant and the three children? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, specifically, was there a trip in early January? January. Of 2020. That would have been just myself and the defendant. Okay. What was that trip? Uh, it was to celebrate our anniversary and we went on a cruise out of Southern Florida. Did you need a passport for that cruise? Mm, I don't believe so. No, sir. Did you ever take any trips with the defendant that required a passport? Um, I don't remember specifically. We, we had one when we went through Canada just to get it stamped, just for, you know, remembrance. I don't remember specifically. Well, we did. We went to Mexico. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Sorry. I forgot about that. That's okay. So the, that leads to this question. Did you have a passport? I did. Yes. Sir. Uh, when you would, you said you went to Canada mm -hmm. to get it stamped. Mm -hmm. You have to say yes or no. Yes, sir. Uh, when you went to Mexico, did you get your passport stamped? Yes, sir. Did the defendant, did you see her with a passport? Uh, in, in, with, in Mexico, yes. Uh, did, she, did she get that passport stamped in Mexico? I, I don't remember. I, I would assume it would have had to been because um, okay. we went to a resort in Mexico. So, But you know for a fact that she did have a passport? She did, absolutely. In this, in, and I'm going to ask you to give me a more specific timeline, but in late 2019, early 2020, where was the defendant working at that time? Early 2020, I don't know, but late 2019, she was employed, uh, I believe it's Whitefield School District 3 in French Elementary School, as I referenced earlier. Um, she was attempting, is what she- Well, let me, let me get to that. I'll get to that in just a second. Okay. Um, so she was working in late 2019 at Whitefield School District. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Um, and again, that's for our court reporter. Absolutely. She'll get mad at me in a minute if, I, if we keep doing that. Um, was she enjoying her work there? She was not. Did she tell you that? Absolutely. What did she tell you? She had uh, a conflict um, based on her educational status. She had a conflict with a uh, principal where she thought she was more educated and should have more of a leadership role. Um, and, and then just other stuff surrounding that. I don't remember specifics, but well, you see so let's face, unpack that face. a little bit. You uh, when face? you said that she had a conflict like, um, because she felt like she was more educated. You mean the defendant felt like she was more educated than the principal? Yes, the defendant. Yes, sir. You saw her facial reaction? She's like, that's BS. Did you ever go to French elementary school? I did. Yes, sir. How many times did you go visit her there? I don't remember exactly, but I would cook lunch and take her lunch for her and her coworkers and um, you can elaborate on that a little bit. So just you would go there and take lunch. Yeah, with her and, and sit and eat sometimes with her. Sometimes I would drop it off. Yes, did sir. you see her interactions with people at the school? Yes, sir. Did you see any um, problems with anybody at the school? Not with her, the team that she was always with. That um, conflict that you described with her and the principal, um, did that? lead to her uh, manipulating, in your mind, getting out of that particular school. Oh, wow, it overruled. In my mind, it did, in, in accompanying with uh, an injury claim she had as well. Did she, t okay, so let's ask, I'm gonna ask you about that. Okay. Did she specifically tell you about, um, uh, some allegations she made about being injured at the school. Yes, sir. What did she tell you? That she was 
standing on a bench or standing on the bookshelf or something, but she fell and a bookshelf fell and hit her in the head and she had a, a head injury from that. Did you ever see any signs um, on the defendant of being injured um, from either falling or having a bookshelf fall on her head? No, sir. Did that lead you to believe that this was another manipulation mm -hmm. by the defendant? Yes, sir. Did she tell you um, what kind of work she was hoping to get into? Yes, sir. What was that? Uh, she always had talked about wanting to be a airline flight attendant. And so I think from what I understand, she started pursuing that uh, late 2019 uh, through the Christmas holiday and into early 2020. Who was she pursuing employment with? Spirit Airlines. Where's Spirit Airlines out of, to your knowledge? I, I have no clue. I know she went to Orlando, Florida for Spirit Airlines training is what she told me. When did that happen? Uh, Janu uh, no, uh, I think shortly after Christmas, within a day or two after Christmas 2019. Um, and it was a short trip. You mentioned earlier uh, when we were first talking about um, the weekend of January 25th, Saturday, Sunday, January 26th, um, your mom being in town. Yes, sir. Um, when did your mom get into, ha into town here in Colorado Springs? She was here for about a week, if I remember correctly. I don't remember a specific date, but she was there, I think, that whole week. Did she stay in a hotel or at the house? At the house. Where did she sleep? Oh, I don't remember that specific time where she slept. Okay. Um, you mentioned that there was Gannon's bed in his bedroom. Mm -hmm. You have to say yes or no? Yes. Sorry. And then there was a second bed in Gannon's bedroom? Yes. And then there was a bedroom bed in Harley's bedroom? Yes. There was the master bedroom? Yes. And then you had couches both downstairs and upstairs. Do you remember, uh, with that in mind, where your mother slept when she visited you in... in I, I still don't. Not that okay. specific visit. Okay. How were you and the defendant getting along during this period of time when your mom was visiting? Not well. How was the defendant uh, interacting with your mom? I think it was fine and peaceful. I don't, I don't remember it being there any negativity. Was there anything out of the ordinary? I don't, I don't remember. Okay. You mentioned um, going up to DIA on January 25th after having dinner and all that sort of stuff. Is that the last time you saw Gannon in life? Yes, sir. Did you say anything to him? Yeah, he was, um, we were at the top of the stairs and uh, I was getting ready to leave with mom and uh, me and Gannon were at the top of the stairs and I just gave him a hug and I always used to rub my fingers through his hair and uh, just told him I love you and uh, something I would always tell the kids when I had to leave or when they would go back to their mom's house was like, you know, you're always, you're always going to be in my heart and I'm always going to be in your heart. And I'll see you when I get back. And he's like, okay, daddy, love you. And I'm going to finish watching Pokemon. I remember it like it was yesterday. Yep. We got into this a little bit earlier about the phones. And I asked you specifically about the phone that was assigned to Gannon and Lena uh, and whether law enforcement asked you for access to that phone. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. You want me to approach? You may. Yeah, I remember. Oh, you recognize this? Absolutely. That's their phone. What is this? That's Gannon and Lena's phone from that time period. Um, does it appear to be changed at all? It does not. Okay. Now I move for admission of People's 228. No objection. Exhibit 228 will be admitted.
I asked you earlier about um, when you would take trips together. Uh, do you remember taking a uh, trip to Hawaii? Yes, sir. When did that occur? Um, okay. Yes. Is there a Kleenex up there? Yeah, I got some. Okay. Um, I think 2018 spring it was right before that volcano erupted. So I think it was spring of 2018. Who went on that trip? Uh, the defendant, myself, uh, all three children, Harley, Gannon, and Elena. Do you remember um, a, taking a video of Gannon in Hawaii? Uh, yeah, we took multiple pictures and videos. Yes, sir. May I approach? You may. People's exhibit number 15. If you need to take it out of the sleeve, you can do that. Excuse me. I recognize it. I recognize my initials right there. What is people's exhibit 50? Uh, now I also see the date of when I initialed it. It says Facebook video of Gannon Stalk. Is this a video of, of Gannon in Hawaii? I believe so, yes, sir. And you saw the content? I did. Of this yes, sir. Is it a fair and accurate uh, copy of that recording from Gannon and Hawaii? Yes, sir. All right, move for admission of People's 50. Amy? Your approach. Is there an objection? Yes, sir. it's relevant. Alan? Do you want to say it from here? Uh, he has to approve. Yes, sir. So I think um, soon should be the lunch break too. Take a look at this. Um, I really wish we could see the witness stand. I thought we were supposed to be able to see that. Um, doesn't look like it though. I mean, I don't know if the, I, somebody said yesterday too that the cameras are fixed. I guess so. There's really no. I don't know. Um, Nine a.m. The trial starts. This is their time zone. Uh, 10 to 10 30 15 minute break 12 ish should be like two o'clock ish our time lunch break it's around two eastern okay and then another break trial ends at 7 p.m oh these are the other time zones okay so yeah two ish like 3 15 3 30 an hour almost an hour and a half lunch then at 5 or 5 30 eastern we'll get a 15 minute break trial ends at 7 p.m eastern so i imagine too that they're probably gonna have dad on he might be on the remainder of the day i don't even know if they'll finish with dad today because this is a pretty big obviously witness directly related you know to leticia and, and his son I, and I'm curious to how the cross is going to be. Are they going to get into it or are they just going to kind of let it go? Oh, Trump's on his way to court? Oh, Lord. Yeah. I mean, I really wish we had some different angles. I guess that's the benefit of like when the media is covering, when, it, when the media is inside like that. Because... Um, I mean, you can tell for sure that dad's emotional, but it would be nice to actually put a face to it, like his actual live face to it, you know? Mr. Allen? Yep, so we'll come back to that in, in a moment, Al. Mr. Allen, you need to refer to the witness by Mr. Stout. Okay.
I want to go back to what we were asking or what I was asking you about earlier about um, the defendant telling you that Gannon had it out for her. Uh, did she make a specific comment to you about Gannon in a knife? Yes, sir. To you? Yes, sir. What was that comment? Uh, something about he had threatened her with a knife or came at her with a knife. Did you ever see Gannon threaten anybody with a knife? No threats ever out of Gannon, knife or no knife. And was that right before um, you got Gannon into counseling in 2019? Yes, sir. I want to ask you about <clears throat> specifically, I asked you earlier about trips that you would take together. Mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned um, that the defendant was trying to get a job with Spirit Airlines. Yes, sir. Uh, did she like to travel? She loved to travel. Yes, sir. Uh, did she like to travel to Disney? Yes, sir. Did you ever go with her to Disney? Uh, yes, sir. In various configurations of family, I should say. Did she ever take any other trips that you were aware of, either with you or without you? Yes, sir. Uh, did... Um, did you take cruises with her to the Caribbean? Yes, sir. Did she ever take any cruises to the Caribbean by herself that you knew about? I don't know about by herself. I know with just Harley, I know she took a few. Okay. What about to Australia? Never heard of a trip to Australia. No, sir. What about a trip to Bogota, Colombia? Never heard of a trip to Bogota, Colombia either, sir. What about Jamaica? Don't know about Jamaica. Uh, like I said, she went on trips to the Caribbean, so I can't can't attest to that. Okay. Um, you mentioned that cruise in Florida in, um, I think you said in January 2020 to celebrate your um, anniversary. Yes, sir. That was just you and the defendant? Yes, sir. Um, did you take other cruises together? Uh, yes, sir. Did you take a cruise in Southern California? Oh, we, yeah, we left out of Southern California, went to um, Ensenada. When was that roughly? While I was in Alaska, I don't remember exactly. So between 2017 and 2018, somewhere. Did you take another um, cruise with the defendant in uh, the summer of 2019? We did, yes, sir. Who was on that trip? Uh, myself, the defendant, Harley, and Gannon, and I think one of Harley's friends as well. You mentioned taking a trip to Mexico. When was that? That was, that would have been right before I went to Oklahoma for six months. So 2016. Where in Mexico did you go? Cancun. Was the defendant with you? Yes. Was she with you the, I mean, besides going to the bathroom or shopping or something like that, was she basically with you the whole time during that trip? Yeah, there was one time I've, I've, was sleeping and she said she went out and got dinner. Other than that, I think we were together 90% of the, I mean, a majority of the trip. Did she ever tell you about waking up in a tent with cartel members? Never heard that story from her mouth, sir. No. Did you ever have um, stressors in your relationship between you and the defendant as it relates to finances? Yes, sir. What kind of lifestyle did the defendant want to live while you were with her? Based on things that either she told you or that you saw. Uh, I mean, a classic example is she always compared herself and wanted to be like Kim Kardashian. That was kind of her main thing that she uh -oh. uh, looked towards. Uh, I, I think a best way to sum it up is always wanted to live above our means. To live above your means? Yes, sir. That's a good way to sum it up. Taking notes? Did you uh, agree to being uh, living above your means? There was, there was examples where I gave and there was examples where I didn't. But was that ultimately a source of tension between you and the defendant? Yes, sir. Did she ever accuse you of um, infidelity or cheating? Yes, sir.
I want to ask you about uh, that storage room. Uh, was it typical that you would keep um, luggage in that storage room? Yes, sir. Do you remember any specific suitcases that were kept in there? Yeah, there was like a reddish orange one. They had some flowery, I don't know how to explain it, but some some patterns on it. Um, there was a large green one. I'd say extra large green one, actually. Um, there was a few smaller, like carry-on size black um, suitcases. So we, we had quite a few. Where did the large green one come from? Uh, I believe that, well, I know for a fact it came from uh, Landon, which is Gannon's mother, her aunt Veronica. Uh, Landon took a trip there at some point in mine and Landon's relationship, and she came back with that suitcase full of clothes. And I, I just kept it after me and Landon split up. Where And was that also stored in that storage room? It was. <laughs> Did you ever use that large green suitcase on trips? I used it more so when, when I moved or PCS'd. I don't remember using it on a trip or vacation because um, it was just too big. Do you remember being shown a picture of a suitcase under a bridge in Florida? Yes, sir. Did you recognize that suitcase? Yes, sir. What did you recognize it as? That same uh, extra large green suitcase from my house. I want to have you flip to People's Exhibit number 48 in that uh, notebook. Yes, sir. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. What is that a picture of? That's a picture of that uh, extra large green suitcase we've been discussing. Um, under a bridge? Uh, I can see the the footings of the bridge. I can't really see the over the bridge structure itself, but does that appear to be the same suitcase that we've been talking about that uh, Landon's Aunt Veronica gave uh, to Landon when you and Landon were married? Yes, sir. That was stored in the storage room. Yes, sir. All right, move for admission of People's Exhibit Forty Eight. No objection. Exhibit Forty Eight will be admitted. Go ahead. And may we publish? Oh, there we go. <laughs> What do you remember um, about that suitcase other than it being large? Um, there was a few things that were broken on it. Um, I don't know if I, I remember, I don't know if the wheel was, but I think the handle on the other side was broken. There's a few things that had just worn down over time on it. Um, but the size is, is the big thing. I remember how, uh, how large the suitcase was. So. Okay. All right. Um, may I approach? You may. What's been marked as People's Exhibit number 33. Obviously, a disc. Do you recognize this disc? I do. How do you recognize it? Uh, because I initialed and dated it 31 March. Did you watch the contents of this? I did. Is it a fair and accurate representation of a video um, that you have seen? Yes. Okay. I move for admission of People's Exhibit 33. Defense. Objection. Exhibit 33 will be admitted. Go ahead. In permission of publisher. You may. Oh, uh, it, it's we need the screen judge. It's not you're not feeding yet. I have a pre screen up here so that I can see. Okay. I just don't know what to do. Well, devastating. Initially, Scott, I can't lie when the TMZ information. Gannon, I promise that's the last time I'm going to ask you. I'm just freaked out, okay? 
Are you sure you didn't do it on purpose? I did it. Okay, you promise. You promise. Perfect. Pinky promise. Thank you. Okay. All right. So listen, listen. We're, all right. I'm, we're gonna have to sell stuff to fix it. Okay. okay. So we figure out what we gotta sell. We can sell the sofa. We can sell whatever because we got to get it fixed so the lady don't be mad at us and kick us out of the house okay you got it you got it i'm just worried about my part. okay shh. listen 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 so tomorrow tell us a couple of we just watched that video guys that's the uh, candle video council approach for a moment please so um Okay. When they did opening statements, they I feel like they played a snippet. I played it because we have it, and obviously, like you can't even now they're not even showing it. But during the opening statements, you could see a little screen at the top of the corner. So I was like, let's actually watch it if it's available. That's what we just watched on the break. That's the candle video. So now we can just hear the audio, but at least we know somewhat of what the visual looks like. And so I guess they're playing the whole thing, but I, I don't think that was the whole. It seemed like it cut off a little bit early. <clears throat> that that was Landon just left. There the entire live from her phone, not FB. And that that was uh, the day before the murder. That's what you guys heard too. They said I'm worried about my burns, huh? So weird, and the whole thing too. It's like where she's like. Promise she didn't do it on purpose. Promise it's just so odd. Like, was she like manipulating him and like trying to like, you know, like gaslighting? That's what I'm saying. Why was she recording that? It makes no damn sense to me. In the moment at that time, why are you recording your child and then like doing that weird? She claims she didn't know it was recording. Oh, come on. That's what she said. Wow. All right, Mr. Allen. Two, I just don't know what to do. That you can see. Who is that? Who's That's that? Lena, absolutely. And then the female voice that you hear on that recording, who is that? Tisha, oh, excuse me, the defendant. And then the um, other voice that you hear towards the end, uh, whose voice is that? Those are the last words I ever heard Gannon speak. I want to have you jump back into that binder, Mr. Stouck, and look at people's exhibits 19 and 20. The ones I mistakenly tried to admit without any foundation earlier. Okay. Do you recognize those? 19 and 20, yes, sir. Are those, um, well, what are they? Those are two different angles of pictures of Gannon in his bed. How did, uh, have you seen those pictures before? I have, yes, sir. When did you see them? Uh, I, I don't want to mix it up. I know I've seen them in um, through various things, but uh, one of these specifically or at least one, if not both, the defendant sent to me that morning, which would have been uh, Monday, the 27th. Okay, so we're talking about January 27th of 2020? Yes, sir. Um, and then you received those specifically from the defendant? Yes, sir. How, what, what method did you receive them from? Text message. Text message. Are they fair and accurate uh, copies of the, the photos that you received on January 27th, 2020? Yes, sir. Right, move for admission and permission to publish 19 and 20. Mr. Fellini? Yes, Exhibits 19 and 20 will be admitted. So 
I think we have uh, People's Exhibit 19 up on the screen now. Uh, tell the jury what we're looking at in People's 19. So once again, that's uh, Cannon in his bed. Um, I, I referenced the TV off to the left. You can see it here, a TV in a, a, his dresser. The table we discussed earlier, and then uh, once again, there's Gannon in his bed. Is that typically um, the way Gannon would sleep in his bed with the blankets uh, just piled on top like that? Uh, no, sir. There was a couple things I noticed that were different. There seems to be a big, I don't know, pillow or bulge or something down here. I don't remember this red and green blanket actually being on his bed. We've discussed that. I, I don't remember that. Okay. I can't say 100% that it, it wasn't ever, but... Um, and then um, people's 20. This is basically just another depiction of that same scene. Yeah, it, it appears to be. Um, I mean, I think it's different, though, because if is it OK if I show well, what, or? let me ask you this. Um, what is there a difference between the two photos based on your observation? Yeah, absolutely. Of, what are those differences? If you, if you look at his where his hand is here. And if you look, if we can go back to the other one, his hands are in a totally different place, position. See how his hands are crossed right here? The blanket's kind of pulled back a little bit. Um, and then a, a huge, huge thing to me was his bed was almost never pulled away from the wall like this. And we discussed that in a previous photo, um, that his bed was almost always pushed up against the wall. Um, and then that um, the bulge that you referenced in the other photo in people's 19. Same as right here. Yeah, right there. And then 20. Right here. And notice that difference as well. And um, do you even recognize that particular blanket or was you recognize it, but you don't think it was typically on Gannon's bed? Yeah, that blanket is one that was in our house somewhere. I just don't think it was a typical blanket. It wasn't his. It was not his. It was not his blanket and it was not typically on his bed. Okay. You can take that down for now. I want to jump back, Mr. Stout, to when we were talking about your trip to Hawaii in 2018. <laughs> and I previously showed you People's Exhibit number 50, which was that disc. I think I might have left it up here. Let me check, actually. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor, this time I move for admission of people's request permission to publish. Mr. Tolini. Subject to prior objection. Uh, objections. That was me. I hit the mic. Okay. All right. The objections overruled. Exhibit 50 is admitted. And permission to publish, Your Honor. You may. So before we start playing um, People's Exhibit 50, um, who's, who, is, who do we see on screen there? That's Gannon. Go ahead and play it. Where are you at? In Hawaii, go. Was that it? When you got back from Oklahoma, Mr. Stout, did you participate in searches for Gannon? Yes, sir. Tell the jury about what you did to, to look for Gannon. Um, the first day, which would have been Tuesday, 28th, uh, left the airport and then came home and just got somewhat organized. And then there was a story about Gannon 
running away or walking away and there was somebody said they might have seen him at a gas station in fountain and so so let me ask you um specifically um you don't know whether that was a true statement or not correct in the moment i didn't um no okay but did that cause you to go do things to see if that was in fact a legitimate sighting of gaming yes sir what did you do I, myself and the defendant in my truck, my red Nissan truck, uh, drove to that gas station. I went in, well, I think I met the officer there, uh, if I remember correctly, and uh, went in and watched whatever the, he allowed me to watch the footage of uh, what boy that ha was alleged to be Gannon coming in and out of the store. And so I could confirm if it was him or not. Was it Gannon? It was not. It was another boy with his father that, or, or whatever, another boy with a, a, a older man. It just wasn't Gannon. It just was not Gannon. No, sir. What else did you specifically do um, to look for Gannon? Uh, there was times when I, after the day was over, I'd drive around at night just seeing if I could spot him. Uh, that specific, uh, I believe it was Tuesday as well, I um, had been downtown to the sheriff's office giving an interview and then came back home and uh, checked on the girls, being Harley and Lena, and then uh, told them I was going out searching again. And I uh, went, went to... Uh, the Walmart and Fountain. I was heading to the Walmart and Fountain. Um, just maybe he's in the video game section or, or GameStop or something. Um, just thinking of places he would be. And uh, then it uh, occurred to me, or I remembered that the defendant had said her car was at uh, French Elementary School. And so I, I never actually went to Walmart. I went directly to French Elementary School to look for her vehicle. And you previously told us that you didn't see her vehicle there? Absolutely not. I drove around the school three times just to make sure I wasn't missing it. Did she ever tell you where her car actually was? Never did. That was the only thing she ever told me was that I left it at French Elementary School. Um, <clears throat> at some point, did, based on things that you're learning, did it, did you, in your mind, did it change from Gannon didn't come home from a friend's house to something different? That was really the key moment. There, there was a lot of things we've discussed a num number of them, some discrepancies in the pictures, um, the, uh, the, the, the rent a car situation. Um, I think I had already known at that point that um, I had talked to my neighbors in surveillance from their house. He had never walked in here. Sustained. Well, I think he, what he's describing, Judge, is what he saw on surveillance. You can't, you, you can't talk about what your neighbor said to you, but you can describe what you saw on the surveillance tape. Okay. So two different circumstances. This is not the surveillance tape of the truck. This is... Let me ask a question. Yeah, thank you. Um, did you have an occasion to see surveillance video from neighbors in your neighborhood? Did you? Yes. Okay. Um, did you see um, Gannon ever walking away on that videos, on those videos from your house and never returning? I did not. No, sir. Okay. So back to. So, well, I have okay. to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> um, so you were earlier describing an accumulation of things that led you to change your opinion or your mind as to what actually happened with Gannon. Yes, sir. Uh, and you said, I think the one of the big things was the defendant telling you that her car was at French, you go to French and it's not there. Yes, sir. Is that accurate? Yeah, that was the key moment when I switched from, she knows more than she's telling me she knows. Did you also participate in um, interviews at the sheriff's office as it relates to the investigation into Gannon's disappearance? I did, yes, sir. How many times did you go to the sheriff's office? Twice on that day, once before the uh, driving to French and then immediately following that I called them and said something's wrong and I went immediately back to the sheriff's office after that. In that same time frame um, did the defendant add any additional information that she told to you uh, as it relates to Gannon's missing? I don't believe so. I don't think so. Well did she at some point tell you that she was raped? That was the next morning. Okay. Yes sir. Uh, what did she say about being raped? I'm not sure the date. <laughs> sure, I'll clarify. Um, we were talking about uh, January 28th. Yes, sir. Just Tuesday. now about yeah. you doing interviews at the sheriff's office. You said the next morning, so that would be January 29th. Is that accurate? Wednesday, January 29th. Yes, sir. <laughs> what did the defendant tell you on January 29th as it relates to being raped? So she, I, I slept on the couch. She called me into the room, and then she proceeded to tell me a story about how... Um, 
a, a man got in the house somehow. I don't remember that specific version, but he got in the house, raped her, abused her, beat her, and then beat Gannon up and took Gannon. Um, and you want me to keep going on that specific? I want right. you to tell what she said in that particular story. Right. And then so and then he she also said um, he had got burned um, and then. And that, and then she said that. Uh, well, I said, well, where's everything at? Like all the mess, you know, the blood and everything. She said, well, I cleaned it up. I got scared, and so okay. Well, where's the the uh, the the bloody mess? The clothes, the 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 rags, whatever. Uh, well, I disposed of it. Well, where's where did you dispose of it? Um, it wasn't in the trash can at the house. It was somewhere else, and it was just this long string of stuff. Um, okay, so let me let me break in there. Sure. <clears throat> It sounds like the way you're describing that, that's a discussion that you had specifically with her where you're asking her questions and she's responding to your questions. Well, there was two parts and that's why I asked you about elaborating. The first one was just her talking. Okay. And so, but the, the last part that you just described, it sounded like you were describing an interaction where you're asking questions and she's answering questions. Yes. And at this point, Landon was also sitting in there talking with us as well, just okay. to clarify. Um, when you had the opportunity to view uh, neighbors, um, I guess, ring doorbells or surveillance videos, uh, did you see any strange men on those videos going to your house? So to clarify, I did. And I was, it was stopped because it was hearsay, but I did never, I never saw surveillance of him leaving or not leaving on foot. The, and I'm sure we'll get to the other surveillance later, but I never saw that. That was just what the neighbors told me. So what I, what I'm asking you right now, Al, or Mr. Stalk, I apologize, is did you see on any of the neighborhood um, video any strange men going into or out of your house? Sure. When I think he just said he never watched any videos. So this was just what the neighbors had told him. That's not what he said. No, he's he overruled. <laughs> That's the he got a little fight in there. He asked the question. Yep. Oh. Just so the record is very clear, okay. did you watch surveillance video um, from neighbors in your neighborhood to see anything as it relates to Gannon's disappearance? Uh, no, sir. You didn't watch well, any videos? Well, I did watch the one video with the truck, but we—I I don't think we've gotten there yet. Or we're there. I don't. I'm, I'm, I don't know where we're at. Okay, Mr. Allen. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're fine. What I'm asking is very specifically: Did you watch some neighborhood video from neighborhood surveillance video? about the time that Gannon went missing. I watched one and that was him leaving the truck and coming back home. That's okay. the only one I watched. Okay, so you didn't watch any other videos to see, um, to either confirm or uh, not confirm that a strange man had come into the- I, I've seen nothing Okay, else. all right, thank you for clarifying that. Um, at some point, did you uh, become involved in the investigation? Yes, sir. Tell the jury about that. Uh, at some point, and I, I don't know the reasons why, but I was directed to go to the FBI's office and uh, start, um, you know, being, I, I call it being questioned, but just kind of given a background history of, of, you know, our relation, mine and the defendant's relationship and, you know, kind of what we've been doing so far this morning. And from that, uh, it turned into um, pretext phone calls. Okay. What do you mean by pretext phone calls? Uh, phone calls where uh, I would um, get on the phone with the defendant while I was at the FBI office and uh, be giving direction. And, and they also gave me the flexibility to talk with her normally, but be giving direction on things to say and things to ask and, and whatnot. Who was involved <clears throat> with that process? Obviously you were, but who else from the investigation side was involved in that process. So, of course, yeah, I was there. The defendant was on the phone and then there was Mark Riley was present. Um, so I'm going to break in every time you say a name. Who is Mark Riley? Mark Riley, um, I think a detective at the sheriff's office or investigator. Okay. I, I'm not sure his role at the time. Uh, Bethel, Jess Bethel, a similar role to Mr. Riley, from what I understand. Um, FBI agent, uh, Mr. Hughes. Um, I don't know his title, a specific title. Um, Amber Cronin. Uh, Who was Amber Cronin with? Uh, uh, FBI as well. Um, John, I, I always say his name around Grusling or Grusling. Grusling? Uh, with the FBI. Um, 
I, I saw in passing other agents, but those were the ones that I remember being specifically in there. Uh, there may have been others. I don't remember specifically. Do you remember um, maybe like this agent back here, Andrew uh, Cohen? I remember him walking around a lot. I don't remember him being specifically on any with me on any of the phone calls. Um, I may be wrong about that, but. Would these phone calls originate um, sometimes by you calling the defendant mm -hmm. and other times where the defendant would call you? Yes, sir. Um, how do you know that it was the defendant on the other end of that phone? I recognize her voice and, and we would always talk about something relevant that would, you know, I would know it was her, whether it was Gannon or something about our relationship or, or, or our life in general. Would you also in those conversations talk about um, specifics to the investigation? Yes, sir. Uh, would the FBI agents or the sheriff's office agents, um, detectives pass information to you to specifically ask the defendant? Yes, sir. On some of those recorded phone calls, can you actually hear people whispering to you? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And Judge, uh, what I intend to get into next is uh, admitting uh, discs and then playing those discs. And some of these phone calls are pretty long. I don't know Ooh. if you want to go through the admission now, and then we can do that other process when we get back. Or So I, are any of them less than, say, 15 minutes? I because of contextual issues, I think it makes sense to play them in order as opposed to breaking them up. Uh, the very first one is an hour and 57 minutes. All right, so let's do the uh, do the foundational um, elements necessary for admission. Okay. Um, and then we can uh, play them after lunch. And probably just admit all of them at the same time yep. and then go from there. I'm gonna figure out the full screen thing later on break to get it fully, fully filled out. Alrighty. So I got phone calls and stuff. That's gonna be interesting. There's a bunch of stuff that's gonna come out during this trial that hasn't been public released before. That's gonna be we're gonna hear it for the first time. I wish we had, like I said, you know, <coughs> some more video, or whatever. Um, like for the, of the witnesses, you know. And so for the record, Judge, uh, what I'll be showing him for admission is People's Exhibits 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59. Okay. May I approach the witness, Sean? You may go ahead. Yeah, I'll get the super chats too. Yeah, right. that's fine. Uh, People's Exhibit 35, obviously a disc again. Do you recognize it? To the front of it. Yes, my initials and the date. Uh, have you had a chance to listen to this recording that's on this disc? Yes. Is it a fair and accurate representation of that phone call? Yes, sir. People's Exhibit 36, do you have your initials and date on that one as well? Yes, sir. Did you listen to this recording? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate representation of that recording? Yes, sir. People's 37, are your initials and date on this? Yes, sir. Have you had a chance to listen to this item? Yes. Is it a fair and accurate representation of that recording? Yes. Equals 38. Do you have your initials and date? Yes, sir. Uh, have you listened to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it a fair and accurate representation? Yes, sir. 39. Do you have your initials and date? Yes. Uh, have you had a chance to listen to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. 40, are you going to put a date on this? Yes. Have you listened to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes. 51, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes. Uh, have you listened to the contents? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes. 52, are your initials and date on this disc? Yes. Ooh. Have you listened to the contents? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. 53. Somebody said there was a, uh, well, Dick said there was a wiretap up on her that she didn't know about. I wonder if that's going to be one of the things we hear. Or what. 54, uh, data and initials on this disc? Uh, yes. Uh, have you listened to the contents of this disc? Yes, sir. Is it fair and accurate? Yes. 
El Guardo. 55 are your initials on this? Day? Yes. Have you listened to the content? Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes. 56 are your initials on this disc? Yes. You listen to the contents? Mm -hmm. Yes. Fair and accurate? Yes, sir. 57 are your initials and date on this disc? Yes. Did you listen to the contents? Yes, sir. Fair and accurate? Yes, sir. Tedious, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Uh, you see your initials and date on this disc? Yes, sir. Have you listened to the contents? Yes. Is it fair and accurate? Yes, sir. You didn't identify that one. Oh, I'm sorry, 58. Thank you. Go ahead. And then 59. Initials and date? Yes, sir. Have you listened to the contents? Yes. And is it fair? Yes, sir. Just thought I'd move for admission of those exhibits. I mean, I can reread them or if you have them. I, I have them. Mr. Tolini? Okay. All right. Exhibits 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and 59 will be admitted. Um, council approach, please. Okay, okay. Let me see if I can. I got an idea. Don't mess nothing up, though. Don't touch All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think you know where this is going and what my conversation was about. Um, we are going to take our lunch break a little bit early. Uh, we'll have you come back a little bit early, too. And when we come back, uh, we will be playing, it sounds like, uh, the uh, telephone calls uh, one after the other. Um, so if I can have everyone back in the jury rooms uh, at about 1.15 so that we can start at, uh, say, 1.20. Um, again, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not do any research about any aspect of this case. Do not discuss the case with anyone else either. Um, Mr. Combs had um, relayed to me a question uh, by a juror as to whether or not you can receive a transcript at the end of the trial. The answer to that is no. The transcript is for other purposes. Um, uh, no jury is ever provided with a transcript of the court proceedings as they are occurring. So you'll have to rely on your individual and collective memory as well as uh, any notes that you take, but you will not receive a uh, transcript. Um, so with that, uh, I think it's still a nice day. We're not to tomorrow yet when it's not supposed to be. So if you want to take a walk around around the courthouse, something like that, uh, that would be a good thing to do. Again, you already know where all of the um, uh, eating joints are uh, here in Colorado Springs. And we'll see you back at uh, about 1.15. All rise for the jury, please. Okay. I got an idea. I got an idea. Don't fret. Don't trip. Don't trip. Um. Okay. Thank you. You may all be seated. Mr. Stock, you can go ahead and step down from the stand now. I like that. Um, And I, I don't see any reason to have Mr. Stout sitting on the witness stand while we play the, the um, these are just phone calls. It's all audio, right? They're all audio. There may be some times where I want to pause it and ask him a specific question, uh, especially at the beginning when we hear voices, who okay. that voice is, that kind of thing. But I think once we get started into the meat of them, I think we can let him down if it's okay with okay. you. It, it's fine by me. I, um, I, it would just be a little bit awkward having him sitting there and not saying anything for it sounds like we're talking about more than five or ten minutes um yes. so um we'll leave it at that um is there anything else that we need to address at this point in time prosecution no you are defense that's it okay all right then court will be in recess thank you all right so and i and i might try to mess around too and, and i can get a little crop a little another screen capture and get the judge's face up Oh, they just cut out the stream too. So I wonder if they're gonna do that every day. They're just gonna cut it out. Bloop. 
We're out of here. Fuck it. Click. Um, I'm trying to think too. I don't know how I want to do this daily. I don't know if I should like end the stream or just leave the stream running and keep it all together. Um, because it looks like they're cutting out the feed at the end of the uh, uh at the beginning of the lunch break and then they're coming back. I mean, I could just leave it running. Well, I don't know. That's interesting that they're doing that. I guess they're cutting it out every day. Yeah, we're out of here. See you later. We got time for the shit. No oh, hot mic moments. Okay. Uh, so let me get some of the super chats. I got a few minutes. Uh, then I have to run for a little bit. Oh, I guess I'm going to leave the stream. I don't know if I should leave it running or do we start a new stream? The, the, the lunch breaks are between an hour and an hour and 15 minutes. So, um, hmm. and I, so I have a, I have a, too many screens. That's what I have. <laughs> Window capture. Okay. 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 So I have a little thing. Like I said, as we move through the trial, I'm going to figure out little things, how to maneuver stuff. The screen will get better. I'll just, you know, work with what we got. Um, how, uh, I thought you start a new stream and we can chat over there over lunch. New stream? Make a new stream? Okay. So I'll have to start with, let me try to do it real quick. So part, this is part one. Part one. I'll make a part two. So save this update. See, the benefit of not doing two streams is that I'll have more notifications in case like a chase happens and blah, blah, blah. But then the other thing is like, yeah, people are just hanging around for an hour. Like, what do you do? Uh, and it's more maneuvering for me. Okay, so we did that. And I'll get the super chats too before we before I set the other one up real quick. It's gonna be more creating and ending and creating. And make sure you're back on time. And then now when do they come back? An hour, an hour and fifteen, an hour and a half. What's up? But I could always start it earlier. Okay, so let me do this. Um no, not that one. I'll make a part two. Okay. No, Emily Baker does that, right? She does like two parts. I guess because the lunch time is around the time that I need to get up anyway, it could work. Depending on what they do. Mm, I already got a thumbnail. Part two. And I'd normally like to get to the super chats faster. I'm sorry about that. It's that today I had the call with Diggs. I wanted to kind of clear and clarify things. Uh, what time should we set it for? So they take a break at two. I guess to be safe, we'll do it an hour from now. How long did they say that the breaks are between? Okay, let me just check my check my thing. They sent this to me. I have like too many places where I get too many messages, and so like my brain is scattered, like everything else is gay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they come back. Between three fifteen and three thirty, so let let's do three three ten or three o'clock. Let's just do three o'clock to be safe. We'll come back in an hour, just to play it safe, I guess. Right? Do an hour, and we'll we'll start figuring out what the flow is for the for the week, upcoming week. All right, let me get some of these super chats. Uh. Let's see. And thank you guys again for riding with me. I know there's other people streaming. I know there's news media or the YouTube channel. So I appreciate you being here with me. We're going to iron out the kinks as we work through it. I think somebody up, somebody was upset too, that I wasn't talking during the trial. I'll talk in between breaks or if there's like a moment of pause, but I'm not going to be over talking 
the trial. I mean, you can go other places, I guess, if you want that, but I'm not going to be like speaking on top of the judge or speaking on top of the father's testimony, like the father that his son was murdered. I'm not going to start over talking the father. Like that'd be kind of nutty. I, just in my opinion. Um, all right, let me get some of this here. Where did I mess up? NYCX, thank you so much. I hope you're still in the chat. I thought this was really funny. So I've been watching for months from Korea, South Korea, of course. Love your wit. <laughs> I know, right? You probably can't check. I really have to head out in, in a couple minutes. I don't have much. Send you Instagram DM. Okay, I'll t I'll, I'm going to look at that when I get back. Thank you, BL, for passing that on to me. That made me laugh. Um, that was really funny. Uh, Elsa, thank you so much again. Appreciate you. Love you. Says I work 40 hours a week. I'm a nurse. We work nonstop. I used to work in the hospital too. The nurses just love me. They didn't like all the texts, but I used to always take care of my nurses. I would literally leave the ivory room because these people were taking so long to like the, the delivery people to come deliver the meds. They take so long. I'd make the ivy. I'd unsuit, go deliver the shit. I'm like, here you go in person. I made it and I brought it to you. If it was like an emergency thing, you know, usually Monday through Friday and weekend off. Amazing. Chives, thank you so much for the super chat. Says, what's up, Mel? I missed yesterday, but I'm here today. I'm glad to, I'm able to watch today. Keep doing you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Mandy, Uncle Eddie was in court for bond. I was on Twitch last night. Um, follow my Twitch, too. Sometimes I jump on Twitch. I was on Twitch last night. We watched Uncle Eddie. It was kind of interesting. It was funny. So, I, I, made, I made some funny commentary. His situation is not that funny. He looks rough. Uncle Eddie... The mullet's gone. The color in his hair is gone. It's all grayed out. He's gained a whole bunch of weight. He has all these medical problems, but they gave him bond. So check out Twitch for that video. Diggs, thank you so much for the super chat. Says, I smelled at a wedding with my abuser. He beat me the night before. Smiling means nothing. Damn. Zanime, 17 months. This cup, Zanime got me. Uh oh, the conspiracy's going to start again. Oh my God, he got her a cup. Or she got him a cup. Oh my God. Oh no. Thank you so much, Zanime. 17 months. Stop by to show some love. Gotta run. Amazing. Lisa Lulu, thank you for the super chat. Says, Can you believe that she killed him three different ways? Stabbing, bludgeoning, and shooting. That's vicious. Yeah, that's like hatred. And for the conversation we were having earlier, as far as like. So, like, I, I don't think this chick had a moment of lapse of sanity. I think she's crazy, but like, motives, potential motives. Yeah, she probably hated being a stepmom. Maybe she, she thought this guy was cheating, whether you think he was or not. In her head, she thought he, she felt he was, whatever you feel about it. And, but it also seems like from the testimony, like they went on trips, they went on vacations, they did this and they did that, you know? But it, the interesting comment is what Diggs was saying earlier that I had never heard that saying before. I can't even remember how she said it. You get what you, it's not what you get, what you give. It's uh, you something, something. You go in, you go out. <laughs> the whole thing is like basically if like somebody is cheating on somebody and being with you and then you get with that person and they cheated on the person they get with you and then you're together with them, that's probably how the relationship is going to end. Like there's, there's not much probably of, of a, the same, that, there's nothing that special about you that that person's probably not going to do to you either probably, you know? That's what the saying was. Um. Sunshine and tan lines. Thank you for the two month membership. Says you're awesome, Mel. Thank you for all you do. Amazing. Thank you, Airdre. Thank you for the super chat. Says defendants found not guilty by reason of insanity are rarely set free and said they're almost always confined into mental mental health institutions. Okay, uh, and I wonder what the mental health institution life is like. I mean, it's got to be better than prison, right? But they're probably drugged out and stuff, or like on a bunch of meds. I don't know. We'll we'll have to look up a for that at some point during the trial. Um, Christina Rain, thank you so much for the three month resubscription on Twitch. Stacy, thank you for the 14 months. YouTube, thank you so much for holding me down. Wow, could she get any further in the corner? I love you. Yeah, she's like all the way off to the side. Nobody can see her. Um, Katie, thank you so much for the super chat. It says, glad to be here live with Mel and everyone in chat. Great community and coverage. Thank you, Katie. Katie. And I think, are you the person that's been sharing my stuff on Twitter too? If so, thank you so much. Uh, con ass mom, look at you now, Leticia. Justice for Gannon. She's hiding off in the corner. Now she's making some facial expressions. Desi, thank you for the super chat. Says we get spoiled with co great coverage. It's frustrating. 
thank you. Roro, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for having us, Mel. Thank you for having me. Princess Sophie, thank you for the super chat. Says hi there. Thank you so much for uploading. I'm watching from France. Wow. And I've been waiting for this trial. I wish I could have five minutes with this flug fugly. <laughs> fugly B. Oh, hell no. Canceled. Elsa, thank you so much for the super chat. Wow, I missed a lot. Thank you so much for the super chat. Deb Godfrey, thank you, Mel and Mods. We appreciate you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for the membership. Prit, Prit, Brit P. Uh, I actually know of Landon from high school. Oh, wow. I hear she works like at a, a telephone. I won't say what company, but a telephone company. I wonder how she's managing that, like between work and having to come to trial and stuff. Cutie Pie, thank you so much for the uh, membership. Appreciate that, Linda. Thank you for the stars. Jennifer, thank you for the super chat. JMST Grill says, thank you for the coverage. Thank you. Thank you. Christy, thank you for coming. A member says, Daniel Beach Roots, amazing. I love Daniel Beach. Watching from VA, appreciate you. Thanks. I love the pier over there. Prickly Pear, Justice for Gannon, ASCH. Unfortunately, DV rules are not the same for men as women. True. If he did this to her, people would go be going crazy. That's true. That's true. Because she did it to him. They're like, oh, yeah, he's at fault. He did it. People would say it's his fault and stuff. Yeah, if it was the other way around, I, I, they probably... It feels like they have more sympathy for women, it seems like, I guess. Ageless Beauty, thank you for the membership. Randy, thanks for the supporter on Facebook. Diana, thank you for the membership. Holy moly. I gotta go. SW4x4, thank you for the super chat. Says, this is breaking my heart. I don't know if I can watch this trial with you. M, thank you for the super chat. Says, vid to, vid to give fake reason why he would run away next day. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe to corroborate her story, I guess. The forethought and planning ahead of time. Rebecca, thank you for the membership. Patrish, thank you for the super chat. Hi, Mel. Hope you're enjoying your new place. I love it. I love it very much. I'm so grateful for everything that I have. I'm just, uh, I just, one of those things in life. I just, uh, even when you have, uh, I, I don't know, nothing, or when you're just, even the little bit that you have, like I always appreciated what I have. And so you just, I feel like that brings more into your life. So I'm just super thankful, grateful. Thank God every day. Uh, Laura, thank you so much for the super chat. It says, oh my God, the defense lawyer looks like, you know what? <laughs> okay. I have to go the new stream. Let me drop the link for you guys. I'm going to move you guys over there, but sometimes people, the notification doesn't work properly or the, the moving over doesn't work. So I'm going to put the link in the chat. Okay. And you guys let me know. We'll test it out this week. Do you guys like me making a new stream and moving it over? Or should we just keep it all together in one stream? Um, so I'm putting that in the chat. I'm setting up redirect part two. Okay. Close. Let me make sure the settings are correct. Okay. Close captions. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So the new stream is set up. You want to teleport? <laughs> New stream is set up. And there's a bunch of stuff that I, we'll talk about. No more. We have, we have eight. I was going to say six. We have eight weeks. Eight weeks. So there's plenty to talk about, okay? All right. Put the chat. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. I'm going to move you guys over. I'll see you guys in an hour. Peace. Bye. Love you. Bloop, bloop. Take a break, get something to eat, drink, not alcohol. I mean, unless you want to, but not, not really. <laughs> Bye. Layla, Lala, thank you so much for the two month membership. Yay, love my time here with you in chat. This, there is a documentary called Out of Mind, Out of Sight. Shows what happens to the mentally, to the mentally ill. Go, I'll have to check it out. 